Don't worry about it. If you I know what yours him, is. By the way, you, just, um, <laughs> you just you just send me you just send some my way. All right. So I will never come back. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third installment of Lou Piercer. This is the start of Mission Two. And where would anyone like to? Anyone like to maybe explain what happened in the previous session? Give us all a quick uh, catch up. All right, quick rundown, gentlemen, ladies, and everything in between. Uh, so we're, we're gonna go deeper into the uh, complex to find whatever we were looking for, right? Lou, so no, I no, get no. back into contact. Lou, find Lou, yeah. uh, and then my beloved character. She decided to go batshit insane. Demons were summoned, demon fight, and now we're just heading back. Yes. That's about so basically, it. uh, Gunky and uh, Balsu decided to head back to the farm. Track, I don't mean to interrupt you, but why are you a mile away? <laughs> you should be in front of your mic. Anyway. Damn, that's very on. My mic is it is a headset that I'm wearing. Oh, are you on the right mic? There's something wrong, because it sounds yeah. like you're really far away right now. It sounds like you're far away as hell. Oh, shit. Okay, give me a second. Check your input. It's fine. So, basically, yeah. The mission had a lot of snags, to say the least. At least um, two different people <laughs> tried to kill the party. One of which was one of their own. But, through a mir miraculous turn of events, the party was able to convince Balsam to partner up with them. And they were able to accomplish their objective. Though, unfortunately, Maximus and his son Maxwell were killed Frown. in the exchange because of Vivi. Throws Good up. Word, Vivi. And, and Vivi was taken away. The party had a close encounter with a demon. There you go. Yeah, you sound fine now. Had a close encounter with a yeah. demon, full-on demon, and the whereabouts of Vivi are currently unknown. So as Two full-on demons. Well, that was la the other one was from last session, but still. Yeah. So, uh, I would like everyone to please put on Guided Meditation by Old Future Fox Gang. And I'm gonna hmm, Vivi dang. really did just show up, summon two demons, hit the gritty, and die. <laughs> Well, or fucked well, off somewhere. You're not sure yeah. if she died or not. Because she left Kellogg's um, all catcher, and he yeah, was like, yeah. "What? What the fuck?" All right, give me huh? one I'm gonna close my door a little more, and then we'll be able to really get into this. Why? Yeah, I think the problem is whenever I use voice mod, it uses my computer's external microphone oh, instead of my headset. That'll do it. So I'll have to deck with that later. I won't be using voice mod uh, this this session, so mm -hmm. it shouldn't matter. All right. It so, should not matter. So my bad. I actually should. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter that much. But um, I guess just for brevity, I'm briefly going to pull the party back to where they left off. Yes. In this room. <laughs> this fucking room. Because, of course, you know, not only did we do that, but we also... You, the party was... For sure. The party made it, a, made it a good point to, of course, make sure that nothing was left behind. So... To, to, to build on that, sorry, is that, you know, the party, after working out everything that went on and ultimately deciding that, you know, uh, Balsam and pretty much half the rest of the party are all pretty much batting for the downfall of Dreckland. So the mission was to recover the technology and everything else they could find. So they did recover the parts of the machine from Dreckland, but of course... They were able to fabricate a. They were able to fabricate a narrative, and with that, they pretty much laid the rest of Maxwell's base to waste. And with that, are currently, actually. I actually forget if I said that. Oh yeah, that's right. Because so, right. I remember now. The yeah. the party that came to retrieve Lou, they all came here using a machine. But specifically, this device is what is known in Dreckland as a Frank. It is a large, six-legged creature that has seemingly been modified through cybernetics to effectively become a... Effectively, a, a carrier truck, basically. It's, this thing is massive. Um, hmm. A post the art for it in VC. Yeah, not that. 
Not that our fair audience would be able to see it, but you will see it soon again. Yeah. So Thanks. the thing about Dreckland is that it seems that they have been mostly experimenting with combining living things with their technology to the use of magic. And the Franks are one of many examples of Dreckland's arsenal of technolog of cybernetic beasts they've been creating. And as far as you know, the Frank is actually a very speedy vehicle, despite its girth and size. It actually has a cannon installed on the uh, the front plate on its face, and it also has a pretty large cache in the back of it as well that has a deployable shell that can basically fold over to protect whatever's inside in case the vehicle would happen to be going into uh, combat environments. And the party basically rolled up in one of those. So... You guys have everything you need, and so Balsam and Tex, it's that when you guys get outside, you realize that Balsam really didn't come here with any kind of vehicle. My man just walked. That's fair. And with that, Balsam's going to kind of look over to you and say, I wasn't exactly expecting any uh piggyback riders, but if you need a lift, and Balsam just kind of squats and puts his arms out to the side. My man has jet boots. Let's go. Uh, I'm actually gonna like look at the soles of his feet if he does. I'm not exactly sure how you got here yourself. I mean, did you walk? I ran. He ran. My oh, face fair enough. Not I mean, well, if you certainly don't mind. I mean, I don't have to worry about getting tired, but uh, I'll make it a point to stop once in a while so you can whiz if you have to. I guess that's fair. He'll he'll go ahead and he'll go ahead and uh, hop on. I guess. So Balsam is going to have Tex on his shoulders, but then he's also going to have. The giant tube that he also ripped out of the foundations, kind of like arched on his back, like Atlas holding up the world, as uh, he sets off. And it's a lot smoother than it feels. Fair enough. And as for everyone else, this is this would probably be the time that you guys are actually leaving as you, you know are able to get out just in time before the actual foundations of Max of some, at least some parts of Maximus's um, facility start to kind of fall in on themselves. You see fire kind of creeping out of the windows Ooh. and such. Checks out. And it's just Kellogg and Lou at this point. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. Kellogg. Oh yeah, that's right. It's literally just Kellogg and Lou. <laughs> just fucking Kellogg and so Lou. So happy about that. <laughs> what a convo. Eh? So, uh, you guys step out, and you see the Frank patiently waiting for you back where you parked it. You see that all six of its legs have kind of, like, hunkered down, so it's kind of just loafing like a cat. <laughs> a very large reptilian cat. And you see one of the large eyes peeking out from under the large triangular shell on its face, just kind of, like, um, move and look at you. Yeah, Kellogg was looking... He was looking back at the facility, watching it all burn down, and just kind of, like, lets out, like, a raspy chuckle. Just like, <laughs> fine work tearing that place down. Well, I can't say that it's the largest and most grand building I've destroyed. But oh, is that so? But I suppose Alicia is something for another day. <laughs> oh, Alicia. I heard that. Actually, Kellogg, I'd like you to give me a history or religion. Oh, shit. Okay, let's see. Oh, shit, I don't know. Here's some annoying History or religion. Uh, let's see. Uh, both are the same. Let's roll history. Uh, that's a two. All right. Oh, geez. But even with the two, I will say, Kellogg, that you, the only thing that you actually knew about Alicia is that it is an entire kingdom that somehow went away. And basically, Dreckland has been 
working a joint effort with the other sort of um, executives of Brulunia to try to figure out a housing situation for them. Yeah. But you've never, like, actually been to the location. Actually, I guess I, I would tell you, but that, and, and bear in mind, you only know this literally because, like, this was all briefed to you, essentially. Yep, that and, makes sense. And it's that Maximus's facility is actually not too far away from the site of, yeah, of, where, of, of where Alicia allegedly was. Yeah, Kellogg's just like, oh, the kingdom that fell off the face of the earth. <laughs> that one, right? Well, I can't say that I alone would have destroyed a whole kingdom, but I certainly hope not. What you say? Oh God, uh, Chris, you just cut out. Oh, I yeah. certainly hope not for your sake. That's what he says. Let's just say I caused a bit of chaos there once. Keller kind of just stands oh, there for a bit, taking it in, just kind of thinking about what exactly Lou is <laughs> more or less confessing to him. It's like yeah. Lou's not even trying to confess. He's just like trying to talk big around his new constituents. <laughs> he doesn't know how to deal with Corn Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no one does. Man has, Kellogg has not turned his back. He's he has he's he's had his back <laughs> to you this whole time as he's staring at the building ablaze and is just talking to you. Like this is the first time he's speaking to you, Lou, and it's like his voice is projecting through your mind, like it's just appearing in your brain, and you're just imagining him speaking to you. God, I hate him. I mean, I hate that. <clears throat> <laughs> Well, I suppose we can't keep the big man all those waiting. Yeah. I'm sure he'll have questions about what went down here. We are down two after all. Hey, Chris, I think you maybe, like, either want to turn on your mic a little bit or maybe just step a bit away from your mic because you are, like, starting to clip a lot. Oh, shit. I got you. I got you. All right. Uh, let me see if this will work. I know it's very oh. tempting to swallow the mic whenever you're voicing Kellogg. <laughs> what about now? That sounds fine. At okay. least I heard all of it. Good. Cool. Yep, so Kellogg basically just says, yeah, let's go back. <laughs> oh, yeah, so yeah. speaking of... Uh, or else I... there's a lot of soldiers. He won't fucking care about this. I was going to say, <laughs> I'm actually going to share the frank sheet with all of you since you guys oh, are actually going to be yeah. commanding it we got our own box baby pretty much yeah <laughs> and let me see if i can actually oh give us access to it well more or less i'm sense. gonna i'm go oh yeah the frank is open for the spectator so that's neat oh there we go you can actually see what it looks like from the top mm -hmm. yeah we just so, can't see the froggy. stats or anything else other than that oh crap you can't oh yeah that's right I you have to give access to every player yeah no, 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 I'll do that, I'll do that, I'll do that. One moment, though. Oh my god, I love the theater of the mind, that's funny. It's great, I it? just got into Roll20 right now. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so, as you can see with the Frank, is that, basically, after it loads on this side over here, is that it requires a minimum of two people to pilot, and those roles are designated as the, if it says it wants to load, which are basically the switcher and the loader. The switcher is basically the guy who's on the control panel, basically commanding all of the Frank's movements, such as its movement, its ability to dodge, and actually firing its cannon. While the mm -hmm. loader is basically the person on the side that's angling the cannon, loading the cannon, and making repairs. Yeah, Kellogg just kind of like looks back at Lou and just kind of like chuckles. You, just, you don't see the... He basically doesn't have a face, but th these weird like pits on his corn head that like outline one and he's gonna laughs like you're lucky there's two left otherwise we wouldn't be able to get back home <laughs> well i suppose i would have found some way regardless i'll be the one piloting this beast i've had my fair share of experience so to speak You do you, corn man. <laughs> it wasn't easy sailing the, seven, the many, many seas of our world, but I did it. 
So get on the cannons, boy! I suppose I'm more suited to switching than loading. You look like you have a good eye. Make sure the cannons are angled at the enemies. And we'll be fine. Well, you should have said it like that earlier. If well, I said it now! I'm good at that! <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I'm, <clears throat> I'm good at that, yeah. Alright, so... You guys load up into the what Frank. What are you? <laughs> you guys don't really have to make any rolls to actually pilot the Frank because... Mostly because at least Kellogg got some training with the Frank before coming out here. If anything, he was probably the guy who likely drove it out here to begin with. Yeah, and he also has driven plenty of ships and other vehicles, so he's got experience with them. Yeah. So, with that, you guys start to make the long, arduous trip all the way back to Drekland. Because, as per your last communications with Oros, you guys were essentially going to be going all the way, basically just going to be returning to HQ as quickly as possible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, uh, actually, eh, it's probably not that important, so don't really worry. Don't think about it too hard. Can I pull up the corn puns website? Go nuts, brother. There it is. I'm not surprised that that exists. Essentially, <laughs> there's, a, there's a bunch. Essentially, I was about to say that you guys actually had some backup with you, but then I realized that you really did not. Mm -mm. You really nope. Didn't. <laughs> just kind of sent out here on a whim like this. So Lou was sent alone, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, pr pretty much. Well, he came and with... he killed the yeah. first strike team, and then the second strike team got him out. Basically. So <laughs> just just a Good just luck. a corn is cob. Yeah, Oros has lost what five men now to this one mission. Well, bear in mind all of the all of the people killed during the Lu one shots. Those were actually all unaffiliated mercenaries that were hired for Maximus. Oh, yeah, no. okay. El Insecto was working for Maximus, not Oros. Yeah, My son. but they, so the but, only casualty technically. I mean, two people missing this one. So. What I will say, though, is that those mercenaries actually were hired by Drekland before at some point. Yeah. Hmm. But you guys don't know that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so um, I'd say it's about, of course, an hour back into your trek. And that's when you guys do get another transmission from Oros. Yep. So uh, the sending goes off and well, I guess it actually would go to both of you. As, yeah, Lua just take it. As the message is basically like, How's the trek back to HQ? Where are you at at the moment? Where are we actually, Mason? What's the surroundings like? Um, roll me... You can actually roll me a survival or a straight intelligence. Alright, I'll roll you a survival. Lucifer. Nine! Mine's probably not going to be all that much better. I... Do not think I have survival. <laughs> not really. Or stray intelligence, whatever's better. Intelligence it is. Oh, okay. Nine. So you can relay that. Kellogg's a bit too focused on driving. Yeah. Let me just check for one moment. Don't distract the captain. So yeah, Lou, with the 19, you know that you guys are, ba you're actually pretty much about to leave the series of ridges that pretty much define the Elysian territory. So, mm -hmm. you guys should probably be back to... Oh, yeah, that... Oh, fudge, that's right. <laughs> I forgot about, the like, the sheer size of the map. So, yeah, it's been an hour, and I, I, I'm remembering the way the map actually looks now. And it's probably going to be a few days before you guys actually do get back to Dreckland itself. I'd say a top yeah. of three, because, like I said, the Frank is a deceptively fast-moving vehicle. And not only that, but it is capable of both burrowing, swimming, and climbing if necessary. Oh, it's all terrain. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Unlike Box. <laughs> it's not, I will say though, it is not as good at climbing or swimming, but it can do those still. So if you guys had to have run into water at some point, it would have been a bit of a slower travel. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. for the most part, uh, Al Alicia and Dreckland have basically like met up enough times to do trades to the point where there actually are some natural routes to basically get it from point a to point b and i will say lou that basically with your with your you know your ability to assess the land with your intelligence role assisting kellogg i'll say that you actually probably steer him onto one of the paths 
that you have have prob that you are actually probably more familiar with when it comes to like getting from Drekland to Elysia. So you feel like that actually might tack a few hours off your travel back. Oh yeah, like, yo, this is by the place where I met the Monkey King. Ew. What? Oops. <laughs> Excuse you know what? We should go that way. Maybe I, maybe I could sacrifice this guy. I won't pry. Well, status report. Where are you? Reaching the outskirts of Elysia. It will still take a couple of days to get there. No. No detours as of yet. We're on track. Do you think you're being followed? Um, hmm. Does not seem to be the case as of now. No, we would no. Keep you informed. We would have shot them by now. Keep your eyes out. You never know. Understood. So we can long rest, right? So let me click that. Yeah, I'll. Because it's if it's been a day <laughs> and we long rested. Yeah, the way that I see it is that you guys would like because the thing about Franks is that they don't have autopilot, so you guys would actually probably take turns. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Do you think the corn man is going to let Lou captain his ship? <laughs> Kellogg only needs to sleep for four hours, and honestly, like... Oh, yeah, that's right. Actually, Kellogg, I... I think because of the way that Zoans work, you actually probably could just sit there the whole time. Yeah, he could autopilot it. Pretty much, yeah. Only really moving yeah. if anything happens. <laughs> Kellogg's like... Yeah, Kellogg is very hell-bent on no one else driving this fucking thing. <laughs> I don't want you crashing into a tree or anything like that. If you put a dent in this thing, it'll be your head. Yeah. Sure. Now man the cannons, boy. They are, well, as close to manned as they can be. Then woman them some more. Sir. <laughs> so, yeah, we're not being followed. It seems pretty okay. <laughs> yeah. So. We're gonna continue business as usual down the route because it's yeah. it, we should we came here so we should kind of have a vague idea of where to go yeah. and plus Lou's familiar so we won't get off course. Yeah, Lou has no fucking idea how to deal with Corn Man. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Yeah, so as you guys are moving along and you know picking your route to get to back to Dreckland, um, I would like the both of you to, if you'd like. Uh, give me a perception roll. Sure. Let's see. 20? Yeah, I love the idea of Lou being completely dismystified by Kellogg. <laughs> also 20, twinsies! Oh, goody! Fair enough. Yeah. As Does you... Frank have the ability to roll too? Uh, <laughs> if you want Cause, to. Because yeah. it has a perception, and You're, it's still yeah, technically you can, alive. You can roll for Frank. I'll allow it. Alright. Come on. 19! Ah! Jesus! Almost twi almost triplets. That's really, really funny. So, as you guys are basically making your way along, you actually have to kind of get across a really big, like, uh, I guess I wouldn't call it a mountain, but it's like a really tall stretch of rock. And mm, it's... A crag. Yeah, it, yeah, a crag. That, that makes sense. It's kind of narrow, but I'd say that it is just wide enough for something like Frank to get across, like, you know, kind of, like, safe oh. without a lot of problems. But it's that when you see that you guys are really high up right now and over the horizon, you guys can actually see the coastline with what appears to be Guy Ular. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah, I need to pull up the map for this. <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty like late into the evening when you guys get back up and yeah, you just see that all of the lights are on and it just just it's just this field of like dancing candles around there and you can even see like the really tall watchtowers they have and even like the large older brick pyramids that they kind of have scattered around the upper canyons that have been dug out and all the water is feeding into mm -hmm. it's kind of pretty yeah fucking Kellogg almost seems to reminisce upon seeing Gaia Ular kind of just like taking in the sights and just kind of like seeming weirdly nostalgic all things considered if I'm not mistaken, Dulce lives there, right? Yep, that's where Dulce lives. Yeah. Past tense. wonder how the family's doing. <laughs> Lived? Huh? <laughs> what happened to Dulce? Don't worry. <laughs> it's actually for a better reason than you think. Anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, no. Kellogg just kind of, like, mumbles to himself. 
Like, he, he, he doesn't, he's speaking to himself, but not really projecting that to Lou, just kind of keeping it to himself. More or less talking about, oh, the sight of Gaiola. Oh, how I yearn for you. A beautiful city. Way better than this hellscape that's Strickland. Bah! And Why could I be working for you instead? Then it cuts to Lou and you just hear a Linkin Park cover band. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, um, it's not, I'm not quite done yet with my description. Yes, yeah, of course. So, as you guys are kind of taken in this sight, whether you want to or not, that's when you feel something. Uh, hmm. There's like, it, it, it's almost, you can barely feel it, but you just can like sense the change in the air. It's almost like as if something just flew over you. It's big. And it, oh, al- shit. And it made little to no sound. But do we see a shadow? Is that kind of what you're insinuating? Like I said, it's like kind of dark. And I imagine if you're like. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And I imagine like the way that I see it is that, you know, you guys can like, you know, see the stars and everything because, you know, it's pretty clear out all things considered. And it's just like that ever so faint. Like dip in blackness that blots out the stars in a specific area. And it just whoosh, like goes right over you. But hmm. this thing feels that it's like too big to not make any noise. Mm. But as far as hmm. you're concerned, though, it seems to have just flown straight over you, really not even paying mm. any attention. Yeah, Kellogg is not liking that. Just He's about gonna to turn into the two kingdoms real quick. <laughs> Fuck. Let me see. Oh shit, Frank is blind beyond 60 blind sight? Yeah. Huh. Noted. Guy Ular has oil. So, yeah, Kellogg is gonna keep along the route and just kind of like we're in kind of like a ravine, right? Then oh. if it's like to the sides and covering us. Oh, and I forgot to mention, uh hmm? I would like you guys to change well if you if you so choose to, I would like you guys to change the music to Neuron Activator, the extended ambient mix, which is the oh. Cruelty Squad. Let me put that in chat. There we go. Music time. Oh, yeah. Gato. Mr. Roboto. Holy shit. So, what do you guys do? You're still on your path to get all the way back to Drunkland. <laughs> yeah, Kellogg is not going to deviate from the path, but he's going to start kind of like, I guess slowing down just a bit to kind of like I guess gauge situation see if he needs to change anything like major he's just gonna I guess let it he's gonna lag behind to potentially have that thing just like piss off in the distance you know what I mean basically I need to know if, if you guys are slowing down or speeding up or staying slowing down speeding. oh slowing down okay yeah um, Kellogg's gonna keep relay- an eye on Gaia Ular to see if it starts getting whacked there yeah no well. Kellogg is going to speak up and project his voice into like lose mind i think we have something in the horizon i'm going to take it a little bit slower i noticed it too stay vigilant boy anything could be around these parts i suppose it's a good thing you put me on the cannons then precisely and uh yeah we're gonna go to half speed to have um fair enough frank sneak Oh, okay. Or I, uh, I guess like the equivalent of sneaking. Yeah, you could roll a stealth roll for Frank. Yep, that's just going to be straight deck. Does Frank have rogue levels, DM? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Does he do sneak attack? Sneak attack, cannon damage, baby! <laughs> God! So I will say that like, Frank still makes a considerable amount of noise, a considerable amount of noise whenever he moves. Because yeah. it's like the clanking of the armor, all six of his large reptilian trunk-like legs kind of dragging <laughs> across the ground. It's kind of impressive that he's able to keep his bulk off the ground itself as he is walking, just because of yeah. the enormous, like, bilge and load in the back, that giant kind of chassis of armor that's pretty much, like, kept in the air at all times. Big fucking boy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty smooth. So even as, like, you know, you command Frank to slow down, it's more or less like the clanking of the armor becomes less frequent. Yeah, But checks still out. otherwise kind of sounds as it did. And because you're moving at half speed, it is going to take a little longer to get over this ridge. You know, there is like 
the distant sort of rock that's dislodged yeah. by the claws that kind of rolls down the crag, and you can kind of hear it echo a little bit up here. Anything to have that thing pass over us fully. Yeah. So, At least that's what Kellogg's trying to yeah, so, figure out. Yeah, so like I said, from what it seemed, the thing that you guys encountered kind of just flew right over you. The best way I can describe it is like, imagine a, a turkey buzzard kind of flying over something to get to somewhere else, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Kellogg is slowing down to see if he could potentially spot it, and I'm going to roll perception on my oh, end. Oh, okay. Kind of scan the sky. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say you can either use your choice of perception or investigation, whichever is higher. Yep, perception for me. Boy, roll. He points over to you, Lou. That's not so bad. Lou starts rolling, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Liz keeping an eye on Gaia Ular. He's not looking out for anything in the sky. Ah, oh, I gotcha, gotcha. Hey, but hey, That's fine. Uh, I still recommend you roll anyway. All right. I think Lou has a better investigation. I can't see Lou having any other skills that aren't, like, acrobatics. Yeah. Oh, shit, investigation's quite high. Mm-hmm. So... Kellogg, you're yes. you are right though. Acrobatics is one of his highest. Yeah, you're you know <laughs> you're you're basically taking your time. You're really trying to absorb your surroundings, and from on your end, it seems like there's nothing around you at all. Like you really hmm. feel as, like because even in a place like this, you don't imagine there would actually be like any wildlife just because of how out of the way this is. I will say you probably see like the occasional smaller like. In a way, kind of like actually related to Frank, the smaller sort of six-legged reptilian creature occasionally scuttle away and hide under a larger rock as you're mm -hmm. making your way down. But it's like no, but it's essentially the size of like a rat, so nothing really to kind of concern yourself with. But Lou, die. I will you say see too much. <laughs> while your while while your eyes are kind of scanning over Guy Ular, I will I will give you something. Um, you know what? How much do you guys actually know about Guy Ular itself? Kellogg is kind of... Oh, you go, go on, first. You first, you first. Oh, shit. Uh, to keep it short, Kellogg kind of has a... He really likes Guy Ular. He thinks it's in a nice place and would have preferred to have got cooped up there. So he kind of knows more about it than you, you, you would think he would. That's yeah. fair. Okay, so what about you, Lou? Lou knows that Dulce lives there. Okay. <laughs> Pretty much it. I would like the both of you guys to give me uh, history rules, but Kellogg, I'll allow you to make a history roll on advantage. Sure. 14. 10. Okay, I'll give you guys the basic gist of it. Essentially, you guys know that Gaia Ular was one of the four kingdoms, in quotations, that came to Brulunia after the land was bought by the... Um, the, the royal family of Ruha Russia, which is the neighboring continent. And specifically, the, I guess, more or less to give some background details to the audience as well, is that basically there was a terrible accident that happened in Ruha Russia. And as a result, a lot of help had to be outsourced to different parts of the world. And because some people were more on the in, uh, a lot of sort of larger organizations kind of came to lend a hand. And in yeah. return, Ruhoris essentially wanted to have a new place where all of these newer sort of settlements could come down and pretty much create like a rotating circle of resource exchange and pretty much help hopefully lead into a new age of prosperity. Mm -hmm. And it just so happens that Guy Ular is actually one of the biggest producers of essentially like fresh produce and fish and across the entire continent and overall guy ular is, and also guy ular is a mostly coastal settlement so you know there are a lot of harbors there's a lot of you know boats going back and forth a ton of resources being established and something that you two would both know is that guy ular surprisingly has really good relations with drekland because drekland is entirely incapable of creating its own produce except under That's very true. specific circumstances. So Guy Ular has been able to make a pretty good sort of living, kind of trading back and forth with Dreckland. You know, they get their fresh produce, and in return, Guy Ular gets more raw ma raw materials and resources from, you know, places, you know, 
there are only so many different kinds of minerals that can kind of grow, like, that can develop around the coast. But, you know, since Drekland's in more of, like, a larger mountainous area, there's a lot of more sort of elusive resources that that basically really help it help Guy Ular when it comes to, like, you know, developing new settlements, maybe investing into more into to build, like, stronger buildings and stuff like that. Maybe even do some more, like, magical research because of the way that, you know, certain types of gemstones are used as, like, arcane components, all that kind of stuff. And one last thing I'll say that the both of you know about Guy Ular is that it is actually ruled by a dragon. What? Oh, yeah. But... Yeah, that reminds me. Is... Are they... What, what kind of dragon are they? I was gonna say... Neither of you actually really know. <laughs> Strell's mom? <laughs> Kill? <laughs> I would say that Lou... Actually, that's the thing. Lou has actually seen... A dragon. You've seen the matriarch of Guy Ular in person. Oh. Yeah, because we did a mission for that with going to the ziggurat, which that was where the whole betrayal happened. Yeah, oh, Lou. I don't, I don't recall that being in Gaia Ular. Never it was, was, yep. Yeah, I guess Lou does a little bit more. Well, if that's the case, I'll refresh you then. Yeah, so Lou... You... I'll be right back, though. I gotta get my food, I'm oh, sorry. That's fine. Oh, that's fine. So yeah, Lou, you remember all the way back when you first came to, you know, Brulunia, looking for opportunities with the new party that you had gotten with. That way is... back, five years ago. <laughs> more or less a few months, but you get the point. Few months of in-game time that is, but uh, yeah, yeah, that is that's where you met Strell for the first time. Strell was apparently the son in quotations of the matriarch of Gaia. He's like Ular. the prince of Gaia Ular, pretty much, yeah. And you also know specifically that after you know Strell betrayed you and went off with Richter Mortis, that. The matriarch basically said, go hunt him down. Yeah. Of course, this promise wasn't really really put on paper, but it still sticks out to you, though. And it really makes you think. And whatever that thinking is, is entirely up to you. Yeah. Kill Strel. How does it make Lou feel? He's probably really mixed on Gaia Ular. Because mm. on one hand, he's got some bad memories here. But on the other hand, Dulce is from here, so it can't be all that bad. Yeah. And he's got a family. So, I'm probably not going to wait for Chris to tell you this. So, actually, oh yeah, is there anything else I can tell you? Because you did roll, actually, it was <laughs> Kellogg who rolled higher than you, which is funny. Yeah. Yeah, I'd you say... You look down at your hand and it just says the note Dulce is dead. <laughs> nah, I, I'd say that, like, Chris <laughs> would... took the kids. Chris would, Chris would also, like, know about the dragon, but I'd say that, like, he he definitely did not roll high enough to, like, know about Strel and all of the weird other inner workings in there. Yeah. But uh, when he gets back, though, I will tell him something else. But... Actually, you know what? I think I might just wait because... Something might happen. Well, it sends the corn man into a tizzy. He tries to kill Lou. Again? Again? So much. I have to inform Oros that I killed the corn man too, and I need him to send someone here to help me drive the car. <laughs> he sends Hyde? That'd be so fucked up. Chris better get his food and come. All right, well, I guess I might as well tell you this. I'm, I'm not going to wait anymore. So, Lou, as you're looking over at Guy Ular, you know, all of that I just told you, you remember. And that's when you actually are able to... I'm back. Oh, wow, just in time. I was just... Oh, hell yeah. I was just explaining to Lou something that he noticed that you didn't. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah. So, you see the temple where you know that the matriarch of Gaia Ular resides. Yes. It's pretty well lit. There are, it's of course, like from this distance, you can't see like specific light sources, but you can only assume they're like bonfires and torches and lookout fires and other things like that. 
So, you know, you see yeah. just these, all of these orange, this, this, these orange, like, spheres all around it, kind of, like, flickering very faintly. And that's when, all of a sudden, every light in the cat, in the, every, every conceivable light that is on the temple goes out. Well, that can't be good. And every other light in the city is still on. Hmm. Uh, let me check your... Let me check something real quick. Do we... Sus, I don't trust that. <laughs> Do we want to go and investigate? Head to Gaia what? Ular for the night. As two people who need to who 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 need to shack up for a whole night. Actually, I'm gonna give this to both of you guys. Hmm. You feel the ground rumble from where you're standing. Well, where you're driving across, I should say. At first you think it's just Frank, but like you know that Frank oh, is moving geez. slower, and you hear more of those rocks being dislodged from the side and rolling down the edge of the crag. And, I think we should go investigate. And not only that, you guys hear a scream. Oh! How loud is the scream? But I want to say, it's less of a scream and more like a very deep roar. You can feel it in your bones. Don't like this. Um. Uh, okay. Okay. Can I? Can I see? Which are we, are we it's adventurous from? and helpful, or are we cogs of the machine? Let, let's choose. Which direction does the does the roar come from, Mason? Um. You know what? Uh. Because depending on where it's coming from, I have to. I can pinpoint it and do something. <laughs> depending on the direction, I'll do something. Uh, both throw me a straight intelligence. Okay. Straight intelligence. 17. Damn, okay. 11. <laughs> Blah, 11. So, to you, Lou, it sounds like it's coming from all around. And I forgot to mention how, like, you know, it's not, like, eardrum piercing loud. It's, like, distance loud like hearing yeah. a fox screaming in the woods right but like yeah monster. pretty much and chris kellogg i'm gonna tell you straight up it's coming from guy ular mm. how queer something appears to be going on over there yonder kind of gestures out to guy ular if it has a small chance of who I think is in there, is in there, we're going. By the way, this is the same day as the factory or the laboratory, right? Day after. Okay, so we have had a chance to recover. Oh, yeah, you guys have yeah, already we had, had a long rest. Okay. Yeah, Kellogg, um, did or Oros? Okay. Hmm. Oros just ordered you guys to come straight back to HQ, but you notice that, like, after your long rest, he really hasn't tried contacting you at all since Shit. up until this point. Good point. I will say, I will say, that in one of the compartments of, like, the interior Frank, there are a few scrolls of sending, so if you guys do want to send some kind of message out, you're able to. I'm sure that Oros would be happy with us. Aiding and assisting his political friend. Could we ring him? Let us discover the nature of what's happening before we... So get a bit closer is what you're saying. Yes. We don't need to bother him with such things until we have proof. <laughs> I suppose that's fair. And uh, Kellogg's going to speed up a little bit and have Frank just... Turn in the direction of Gaiular. Very well. I am going to say that you guys are going to have to first get to a safe point to actually rappel down, just because of how narrow this peak is. Yeah, we're going to get out yeah. of this 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 little ravine area. But yeah, as you guys basically get to like the floor, that's when you kind of see things a bit more clearly. Specifically, you see the dead 
arid region that's around the northernmost part of Dreckland because mm-hmm. it has been drained of all life from yep. all of the exhaust and waste of this kingdom. But further off, though, you can start to see the outskirts of the incredibly dense forest that has grown around the base of Dreckland itself. And one thing that you that you both know about this specific area of Dreckland surrounding its base is that something magical is going on with it, and it's kind of dangerous without the right protection. And Frank yeah. is that protection. <laughs> yep, that checks out. So, but of course, off to the side of that, that's where, you know, you see the land kind of start to smooth out a bit more. It's like a pretty wide sort of like open plain. And just on the edge where you at the position you guys are right at right now, that's when you can see the forests and the more sort of tropical areas start to like recover and basically act as the natural canopies and shrouds of Gai Ular, which is off to the side. And I will tell you guys straight up that if you do want to make a detour to Gai Ular, that will probably add another three days onto your total time traveling back to Dreckland. So because you you guys both know that like this is obviously going to take longer, it's common sense that you might want to tell Oro. Yeah, I didn't think doing. it would. I, I yeah. figured that if Gaia Ular was in viewing distance, I didn't think it would take three whole days. So yeah, we should probably tell Oros. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like, well, I only say three days just because you guys have to go there and come back. Yeah. It's more or less like where you're at right now. You can kind of like see the whole, the whole coastline kind of just like very like far on the horizon. It's like, yeah, yeah it's kind of like you're at one side of Hawaii looking over to, on the big island, looking over to the other. Kellogg's going to instruct um, Lou, go find the scrolls of sending. Phone, Oros. I'll let him know. Good. There will be monsters. (laughs) You could say that the situation has become corn complicated. <laughs> you test I, my patience, boy! I, I'll, I'll go talk to Oris, okay? <laughs> go speak to him. Uh, leave my quarters. Uh. Oh, I was gonna say, if you guys want, just for, like, the sake of who's on screen, you guys actually can put your icons on the board if you want to. Oh, yes. Okay. Pale blood. Let's see. I just thought it's kind of <laughs> funny, because they're, like, all standing on the stage. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. I could put Frank there, too, actually. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> He's so <laughs> big. He's so big. Why is Kellogg so big? Oh, because you guys are on a stage. I make you a little bigger. Oh, yeah. Good point. <laughs> sure, I'll put Frank on there for you guys as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. All right. So, actually, uh, you know what? It's like it's like it's like one of those fucking uh, <laughs> loadouts. No, I was gonna say it's like one of those like really really shitty um uh you know like like elementary school plays where you guys have like the giant cardboard cutout and you're just like, <laughs> part of it. That's amazing. Was, basically, what's happening right now? I love it. Yeah. So okay, uh, Lou, what kind of message do you send to Oros? Um. Strange anomaly happening near Gaia Ular. Investigating promptly. ETA three extra longer, days. Longer three days longer than expected. All right, so that should be twenty five words. Yeah, that's good. Very well. So I'd say about a minute goes by until your sending is immediately replied to Mm -hmm. the fuck you are and it's a very irritated oro saying do not stray from mission objective return to hq immediately you heard the man oh i sure did ah i guess my journey to gaiola would have to wait Understood, boss. We'll discuss this later, after I've gotten some sleep. 
And with that, <laughs> bitch, you guys ride out the rest of the night. Yeah, Catalog just continues on course, seemingly uh, disappointed. <laughs> Unless you guys are gonna uh, ignore direct orders, we're basically just gonna skip. Yeah, I am. I am not. I'm not in a position to ignore his orders. <laughs> Very Honestly, well. neither is Lou. All right. We've got to be his friend, boy. I'm aware. Give me just one moment because I takes a swig of beer, <laughs> corn beer. Corn, just that's just, just whiskey. Just pure, <laughs> just like pure cornstarch. <laughs> All right. Don't uh, touch me, I'm sterile. I feel like I actually might have shown you guys this map already. But I am just going to pull you guys over to it. And we mm -hmm. are going to wind up back in Dreckland. Hey, whoa. Is that a ballista? Hold up a minute. There we go. Let me just adjust. Of course. And yes, these are, these are Planarian class ballistas. And... Drecklin has had these bad boys protecting them for quite some time. Mm hmm So, you guys are back in Drecklin, and we are going to change the music. <laughs> oh my god, the rusty cog. Or one of the characters drank monkey piss. Hey, hey Zank, Zach, Let's what's go. that one like? Oh, I found it. Children of the Omnissiah. Good-ass song. Good-ass fucking music. Everyone, please put on Children of the Omnissiah by. Oh, I'm gonna push the Warhammer 40k. Name. Mechanicus. We love me, Mechanicus. Actually, I think that was Drac. Yeah, who? Yeah, yeah he did drink the we monkey stuff. David, Warhammer 40k Mechanicus. No. Please forgive me <laughs> for pushing your name so horribly. <laughs> so, Kellogg and Lou, you guys wind up back in Dreckland, and. You're, you're, you, you guys get through the forest fine. There's like a relatively safe passage that you guys know how to get through it without really getting into any nonsense. <laughs> and you find that elevator right at the base of the mesa that Dreckland is built upon. You guys load up your Frank and you undergo the long and arduous <laughs> ride up slowly piercing through the clouds and eventually reaching those giant brass doors that start to wind themselves open to allow you passage inside. And you make your way back over to where you're positioned on the map right now, which is mm -hmm. the access down into the depths of Dreckland, where there are, where of course, you know, there is the mercenary area and the laboratory for experimentation and sciences. Or more or less, I should say, the headquarters of the UAD, which yep. is, you know, the the type of organization that Dreckland is heading. And UAD obviously standing for you are dumb. <laughs> Good. So I'd say it's at this point when you guys actually do arrive at Dreckland, you guys get another sending by Oros, essentially telling you guys to pretty much like go back to your go back to the um I know it's called HQ, but I guess... Head back to headquarters. Headquarters, but then, like... Oh, crap. I'm trying to think of, like, the specific word for this type of room, but, uh... Hmm. Crap. He's talking about... To a debrief room? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Briefing, Briefing room. Or I, love yeah. The, I, love the, I love the English language, anyway. You guys <laughs> basically are sent to, basically sent to go meet in the debriefing room, which are pretty much where every one of your mercenary allies have, been, have basically been grouped together at some point. Mm -hmm. so, and nothing seems to have changed yet. It seems all normal and safe. Yeah, you guys like are... Like, no chaos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? Roll me uh, some... You can roll me either insight or investigation. I'll roll... Insight. Seven. Seventy-four. <laughs> Lou has no idea what the corn man's looking for, so he's not going to roll. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. So, Kellogg, I'd say that, like, you pretty much get your standard array of what you've seen in Dreckland before. You see the many armored hobgoblins kind of moving in and out of the metal corridors down below. You, mm -hmm. also, you also occasionally see the large lumbering Amber Hulk that has been equipped with a oversized quad-barreled shotgun just kind of, like, moving into position. <laughs> 
one of them is one of them is actually like leaning up against the wall sleeping right now and the other one is furiously trying to wake it up so it's not seen slacking on the job and of course you also have your fair share of uh i guess more like lightly dressed scientists kind of like mulling around back and forth trying to stay out of your way a lot of them definitely giving you strange looks it's mostly a combination of actually there's quite a few driven in here hmm that's why i can describe it <laughs> tell i'm just snarling and gnashing it like the scared scientists <laughs> like the fucking grinch you also occasionally no. see you also occasionally see your pick of uh, metallic dragon spawn in the and the um rare dwarf as well mm -hmm. <laughs> irene's just here for some reason god <laughs> <laughs> scary <laughs> So, sweats. You guys make it into the briefing room, and you actually see Oros, Oros, and May sitting behind their usual desk, kind of looking out around the whole room. And Oros, um, waves out his large augmented mechanical hand to let you guys to sit. So, for those who have seen Oros before, you guys know, but the audience does not. So, Oros is a gnome, which in my setting are actually these small, almost axolotl-like people, and Oros is has been alive for way too long at least longer than you've ever seen any gnome slash poly be alive for he has heavily augmented his own body with the cybernetics that dreckland has found itself on and primarily you can see that there is a large sort of vat apparatus on his chest that seems to filter water through water and other important vital fluids through him while his right arm is a actually yeah it would be the right arm is a comically oversized metal gauntlet with sharp talons and upon his head is an oversized crown embedded with green glowing gemstones and even one of his eyes are actually seem to have been modified in some way as they kind of ex as they kind of like retract an apparatus at you and i mean sorry not an apparatus a, a sh an aperture yeah, aperture, yeah. Yeah, like almost like an aperture of a camera, his one eye kind of like widens and sort of shrinks to like adjust to meet you two. And it's like, all right, gentlemen, please take a seat. Kellogg takes a seat, kind of wrapping himself around one of the chairs. So, we will also take a seat. <laughs> I see your two men short. Indeed. Missing in action, unfortunately. And you are completely unable to recover any kinds of remains, right? From what I could tell... A it demon, is unfortunate. A demon was summoned. It absorbed one of the party members. Proceeded to absorb another one. I shot it, and it disappeared. The rounds are on the ground to prove it. The many in fact. Did you bring any with you? Did we bring what? Bring demons? Evidence. Evidence of what you're telling me right now. Unfortunately, it disappeared in some sort of smoke. I want you guys to roll me deception, but before you guys roll the deceptions yourselves, I'm actually going to be kind of doing something that I feel like I probably should have been doing since the beginning. I, <laughs> like, there's... At least as far as I'm concerned, there's no way of actually doing this in, 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 in Roll20, but I know you can do it in Foundry. But essentially, mm -hmm. the way that it works is that you guys yourselves make blind rolls. And yes. I don't know how to do that in Foundry. I mean, sorry, in Roll20. You so... can do that in Roll20. Can you? I just forget exactly how it's... Wait, what do you mean blind rolls? Do you mean just for the, D the GM? Yeah, you can, oh, no, you can even like for slash you. G oh, no. You can like slash oh. GM. Oh, no, for you guys. A hidden okay Bowls I understand. that even you can't see. I yeah. feel like this just it just kind of helps like, you know, at least like the social aspect of D D, so you kinda really don't know like what you're getting across or how well you're doing. I understand. You know? You know, cause hmm. For the most part, what most DMs will do is that they'll roll a dice and then add our modifiers to it. That's, yeah. That's pretty much what I'm gonna do. But I just wanted to let yeah. you guys know that that's how I'm gonna be handling it from now on. Okay. Understood. So I'll tell you my deception is a plus zero, so it's just a d20. Plus right. eight. Let's fucking go. Ah, nice. I mean, <laughs> you are the one using the words here, so it's best that you get the best roll. He has read the art of the deal at least once. 
tell I can't read. Oh, that's a wonderful. joke. He actually can. Well, no, he doesn't. I, I don't even know. <laughs> can they even see? Words? Can Kellogg read? <laughs> okay. A pirate's life for me. No need for reading. But can he see why kids love cinnamon toast crunch? No. <laughs> so, okay. Mm -hmm. I will tell you right now. You guys actually rolled pretty well. Hey. So. <laughs> Oros gives a bit of a funny look at 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 um at Kellogg as you're your side of it. He kind of like yeah. He's like he's like. <laughs> You notice that, like, his, his other real eye is kind of squinting at you a bit. But, Lou, when you give the exact details, he kind of, like, loosens up and tilts his gaze over to you, and it's like, yeah, that makes sense. It's finicky like that. Lou has done nothing but present himself as the obedient little soldier Oros wants him to be. <laughs> yeah, true. The remains, you found, the remains you did recover, though, were in pretty good condition. It will be recycled shortly. Understood. So, as for your next objective, you're a few hands short, so we have someone to accompany you. I forget, did we take the body or did we give that, that guy to Balsam? We gave it to Balsam. Oh, Lord. And then we blew up the rest of the rooms. <laughs> but um, you see May actually speak Kind of like lean down and speak into Oros's ear slash gills. And then he's like, wait, what? What do you mean he killed himself? <laughs> Oros just kind of like leans forward and just like pinches the bridge of his non-existent nose and looks back at you. It's like, all right, sorry, scratch that. Um, You two are going to be alone for a little bit. Oh, goody. Sir. I'm sure we'll work something out in the meantime. You two seem pretty capable together. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Please don't say the same thing I'm saying. So, as for your next objective, we're going to be going to Guy Ular. Well, I'll be. Looks like we're going there after all. The reason why is because we have to extradite a criminal that has been outing information about what we've been doing here. Ooh, not good, not good at all. His name is Strel. <laughs> and I think That's what you want. <laughs> Go ahead. And just to make sure that we maintain the best possible relations with Guy Ular, I have organized a meeting with their matriarch. So, all you two have to do is just sit there and look pretty. We show them the evidence, and hopefully we'll be able to do what we have to. I'm sure she'll be happy to see me again. Oros, Oros kind of quirks an eyebrow at you. You been there before? <laughs> I've met the matriarch before. She charged me to kill her... spawn. Oros nods slowly. Did you do it yet? <laughs> That's why we're here. Right. I remember that. I didn't forget it. Of course. <laughs> insight <laughs> roll. <laughs> you can roll insight if you want. Yeah, I will. I choose not to. Okay. <laughs> 20. <laughs> Lou believes him wholeheartedly. Okay. I got a 20. All right. <laughs> that roll was meant to be hidden, but it doesn't really matter much. <laughs> yeah. Essential. So, yeah, for future reference, oh, basically any roll that... Ball. Any role that involves, like, I say, like, any role aside from, like, perception or investigation, that's going to basically be a role that's going to be done by me. But I'll, I'll give it to you, and I'll just outright say, Kellogg, yeah, he totally forgot. <laughs> Kellogg, what's... <laughs> totally. Kellogg's I mean, that's going the to entire speak. reason why Lou brought it up, is because he pretty sure, he's pretty sure that Oros likes to forget about this kind of shit. <laughs> yeah, Kellogg just straight up just says, wisp, like, projecting his voice to only Lou and no one else, he forgot... No. <laughs> Oros just kind of like scratches something behind his ear. What are you guys rolling? Yeah, basically. So, with that, Oros is like, I've already set up the meeting. 
You'll be heading out tomorrow. You'll basically be my representatives for this operation. And hopefully we'll be able to occupy a significant part of Gai Ular with our armed forces so this creep does not escape with his life. Are we clear? Understood. Good. Do we have a name of the criminal, sir? A description. Anything to look out for. Uh, Oro snaps his fingers and uh, the driven woman standing next to him pulls out um, a folder and kind of just like puts it on the desk, spreads some things out, and Oro basically gestures for you to come forward and take a look. Let's read the f- heckin' dossier. Yep, give me a little look-see. His name is Snip Silvertongue. Oh, <laughs> shit! He's a freedom ah! fighter. He's a freedom Fuck. fighter of sorts. At least he calls himself that. Outs any, outs any information he can find on literally anything and won't let anyone live it down for it. I mostly ignored him because he wasn't really dealing with us, but we seem to be his prime target. He knows about the teleportation experiments. Or at least, he claims he does. And I don't like that. Would you? Of course not, sir. I don't think I would like that very much. So, we're gonna go down there, provide this evidence, and he'll be in our custody. For the rest of his life. So we're supposed to transport him back here with Frank. Oros just kind of like, looks over your shoulder. I mean, with the number of armed forces we'll have in there. <laughs> You'll have five francs at your disposal if you want. But like I said, we need to have this meeting first. We have to make sure everything is delegated so we can do this. Uh, legally. Clearly. By the book. Get all the paperwork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't rub it in. I get it. <laughs> we wouldn't want an international incident. It's understood. Yeah, I know. Small potatoes. <laughs> well, you know what you have to do. Take the rest of the day off. Get something nice to eat. Your pay will be and- waiting for you. Hey, Lou, in your head you hear just Kellogg just say, Dumb fuck. Like, direct to the, the aura of him, just directly. Lou just continues to stare forward as if he didn't hear anything. <laughs> uh, aha. Kellogg, I'm going to roll an insight for you. No, you... <laughs> no! Okay, you know what? Yeah! This fucking go. Well, actually, well, actually, yeah, yeah, an insight. It is a psychic voice, and Kellogg does not emo, but I, I want to see him curious. I know. Because that's concerning. Oros hears everything. <laughs> true sight, except it's true hearing, I guess. True thought. <laughs> true thought. Did you try to cast magic around me? Um, that's just how I speak. Fool! <laughs> <laughs> you guys are able to leave the room. Oros is silent. Sounds about right. <laughs> Oros charges that you're put in the heating receptacle again. <laughs> Into the microwave you go. More, <laughs> more like the freezer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so you guys head back to your to your bunks, and basically, you guys, um, yeah. So the way that it's set up is that pretty much any mercenary that is employed by Drecklin that is not one of their grunts basically kind of has their own private quarters, and all the space mm-hmm. is still shared. And you guys basically get your own lockers that you have also have keys to access as well. And as you guys go to open up your lockers and see that you guys have received your pay. Each of you have 50 gold pieces. 50. Nice. Fair enough. So Lou looks to the locker next to his. It says Axel Little. It's stuffed to the brim with gold, but it's too (laughs) high for her to reach. (laughs) So. How do you guys want to spend the rest of your day? Crying. <laughs> Kellogg is going to like look at look at the paycheck, and as soon as he's leaving, he's going to complain about it. It is just petty cash. <laughs> I can't make an empire with sixty-five gold to my name. Can't even get like a beer with this thing. I still have to pay off uh, medical bills. Oh, you got a debt, don't you? Oh, you poor sod. <laughs> what is he? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, let me, let me look at the map of a Drakland. 
<laughs> what is he? <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh... <laughs> hmm. Shit, isn't there brass what bleeders? What's that again, Mason? Oh, uh, the brass bleeders is essentially the uh, weapon and general supply store. <laughs> Mm, okay. Pretty much, pretty much every every grunt and every other resident of this wretched place worth their salt goes there to get all of their finest murder machines and other instruments of torture. Actually, I kind of want to go. Hmm, I kind of want to pick up some potions of healing if I can. I don't know if they would sell it there specifically, or there might be like they'd sell an apothecary those. Carry they would actually somewhere. sell. They would actually sell those at the Rusty Cog. And yeah, if that's the case, Kellogg's going to kind of look around and kind of look at the rusty cog and be like, well, I'm going to do a little shopping. Feel free to come along, boy. Lou is considering. <laughs> Lou is considering. I'm just Lou getting gone. some things for the row, okay? <laughs> oh, I see how it is. <laughs> Leave me in the dust, I don't you? Just a job. I don't need him. He's gonna stomp over to the rusty cog. If the stream decides it wants to load, no. It's a little odd. Lou finds the one escape away from Kellogg <laughs> into the pit. <laughs> oh God! That's our residence, boy. Hold on a moment. You can't us. Oh, yes. I get to show this off now. Oh? <laughs> Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. There we go. It seems to be working properly now. <laughs> People of the AMS. Yeah. So, Kellogg, you're going into the Rusty Cog? Yes, I am. Okay, I'll move you there then. Looking for some things for the road, potions, and the like. I will say they pretty much have access to all of the type, the potion types that are in the books, and yep, yep, yep. What are the prices? Because I'm gonna look that up. Let's yeah. show you now. Um, potion of healing. That should be. Oh, piss. You don't have the price? Okay, oh, it's hold on. fine. I'll... It's not a big deal. I'll, I'll say that, like, uh, there's, like, po superior healing is like the best <gasps> one, right? 50 gold for the worst one. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Eh, honestly, I'd say that, like, all of the potion prices are probably, like, quartered. Okay, okay. So... Hmm... At least for this setting specifically. Yeah, let's see. So, <clears throat> I could probably. Oh yeah, okay. Kellogg is going to pick up. Um, I have sixty-five because I got some starting wealth. Uh, two potions of greater healing. Yeah, how much are those? At least you know. Assuming are... the price. Yeah, what what are their base price? Base price is a hundred. If it's quarter, that's twenty-five. Yeah, that's about right. Because... He's gonna pick up. Two potions of healing at the Rusty Cog, kind of just walk, waltzing in. I need your finest potions. <laughs> Potion seller. And then uh, a decrepit, driven man rises up from the hackles of his desk and says, You can't afford my strongest <laughs> potions. <laughs> oh, but I can get the third best, right? My potions are fit for a beast, let alone a man. I am neither. Uh, very well, then you can buy them at their normal price. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Even the potion seller's like, what is he? Get out of two greater potions of healing? Or, yeah. 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 Good. Thanks for that. So, I wait, the shit. owner was a, um, Hold on. Uh, the hybrid of a bugbear and a... I'm trying to remember what they are. What are you talking about? What? I thought the owner of the Rusty Cog was like a guy... Uh, I forget what they're called. The hybrid between a bugbear and a... Oh, Hecticon. Oh, yes. Hecticon, yeah. You, that's when uh, you look over to the... You look over to the side, Kellogg, and you see a sign that says, Handy is off duty. Extend, <laughs> extended medical leave. 
Under wow. new management. Yeah. Also, I can actually buy... I'm going to get seven potions of regular healing because I can afford that with the rest of my gold. Go right ahead. All right. Yeah, Kello gets fucking nine potions to his name. Very well. Let Very cool. He may just survive the next mission. So, uh, Lou, what are you doing? Lou has no idea what to do. He doesn't really know how to enjoy himself. Might as well be a Ronin masterless <laughs> critter. The last time that he had any time to himself, he was like, I'm going to go and farm. <laughs> this is the opposite of that. Quite literally. What do? <laughs> you could go to the Arboreum or Arbitarium or whatever it's called. Yeah, the the, there's, there are some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Vivarium. Yeah, where's that at? I think right it's in here. the center with that yeah. stupid ass statue of Oros. It's one of the floating oh. islands. <laughs> Just gonna just like kind of stare at the statue of Oros for a little while, just try to think. I will say, contemplate life. If you break it, there are items inside. I will say, the <laughs> statue of Oros, it doesn't really look a lot like what he is now. It shows a lot less modified Oros that looks a lot happier. Push the statue into the abyss. <laughs> Crush a few dwarves. They'll get over it. They'll walk it off. I know I did. <laughs> God. <laughs> All right, let's go look at these flowers. Enhanced leg. All right, flowers. Yeah. <clears throat> let's let's go to the butterfly room. Hector went there. I remember. Hector enjoyed the butterfly room. <laughs> Maybe it'll give him a sense of semblance of hope. Maybe it can scare a kid too. Feel something once in a while. <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> could you imagine you finally get a day, your mom takes you to to the arbitorium. You go to the butterfly room, it's the it's the most beautiful, wonderful moment of your life, and then Lou walks in. <laughs> 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 God. Robocop walks into the room. <laughs> Do you go to see the flowers? Reminisce. Considering that he just kind of met with Balsam, it's kind of reminded him to try to get back to his like more natural roots, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, he'll 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 check the place out. So you go inside, you show them your uh you show them basically your your Dreckland assigned like mercenary ID, and they actually let you in for free. <laughs> it's stamped onto his body. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so You'll let me in for free. I am literally Oros's property. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, two dollars. Two two ninety five three electrum. <laughs> <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> so you go up the sta- you go up the large like kind of spiral stairs of the of the uh the left tower so to speak and that's when you end up in the the stained glass room yeah it's basically like you can kind of see it right up here it's just a big dome of like kind of greenish stained glass all of these decadent patterns and sort of like um i guess pictographs just kind of showcasing a combination of Drecklin's history and mm-hmm. just like the various other sort of it's interesting because despite Drekland being like its own, you know, functioning kingdom, you really haven't seen any imagery of the deities of this world in this kingdom. Mm-hmm. And when the sun occasionally, sometimes almost maybe pierces through the clouds of miasma and pollution, you're able to see that the reflections through the sun, that the reflections through the glass actually make these really sort of like pretty like castings and images on the floor from the dis- from the diluted light and in this and i will say that you're pretty much the only person here except for a very well dressed hobgoblin and a much smaller one that's in this frilly little white dress just kind of like happily skipping around admiring all of the various flowers and other large insects that are also inhabiting this space. Lou has killed far too many (laughs) hobgoblins intimately. It makes him uncomfortable. 
But honestly, like, he's not the kind of guy to... Uh, well, he is sort of the kind of guy to self-monologue, but he doesn't want to do that here. I'm alone. <laughs> On wolf. the off chest that people will hear him. Rar. Yeah. The, but um... I guess he's really just thinking about Balsam, everything that's happened, how he might be able to contact that 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 strange new hatted figure that reminds him a little bit about Snips. Because I'm pretty sure Tex told him that they knew Snips, right? Did he? Uh, I think we mentioned uh, Snips when is... we were talking about Dulce. Like, the name was dropped. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could be wrong. Well, it sure hmm. is a good thing that Tex ain't here right now. True. <laughs> because Lou would know. Sweats. Like, if he could find a way to get a message out there, they might be able to get Snips out of there. But as he is right now, he does not have that ability. So If only Pascal was here. If only Pascal were here. One, God, one, one day the chat will be ready for Pascal, but it's not today, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't think the chat is ever ready for Pascal. So, if only if only chat was if only chat were ready for Lou's second half of his kit. Yeah, you could you could you know, <laughs> Lou, as you look longingly into the flowers, you you see the visions of the farm that you spent your very few but honestly relaxing days on. And you know, some of the flowers in a weird way almost look like Pascal's shriveled nutsack as well, and that also kind of fills you with some kind of... It's almost feelings. nostalgic at this point. Ah, <laughs> uh, I remember those balls anywhere. <laughs> and, um... That's when I you always kind hated of... it! And, uh... Eh, roll, um... Actually, roll, roll me a perception real quick. I remember when they first invented chocolate. Chocolate. Lou. Perception? Yeah, perception. Ba, 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 ba. Is this the old art for the Hellwalkers? Yeah, it's still there. <laughs> Disgusting, horrible. Passive, you're passive. 13. Okay. I'll give it to you. So, Lou, you're, you're, you're just kind of like, you're, you're standing there very solidly, almost as solid as the Hobgoblin that's like probably about like 10 feet away from you. And that's when you hear something and then you instinctively step out of the way and the little hobgoblin girl just kind of like falls over right in front of you just kind of like splayed on the ground and she just kind of like looks up at you and um the taller one turns around like her head just kind of cracks over and she's like honey leave that gentleman alone she just kind of sits there for a second like kind of like on kind of, like, restricted under the bulk of, like, her own giant goofy dress until she writes herself and she says, I'm sorry, mister. It's, uh, it's fine. Lou removes his hand from his holster hip. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna shoot you or anything. <laughs> That's just, like, natural way that Lou reacts to things. He has, like, a cowboy stance at all times. <laughs> yeah. Basically. So she just kind of like she stands up and she goes to like turn away and then you see her kind of like walk around sort of like to your side and you can see her staring at you from the gap between your tibia and fibia. You're like a skeleton. Oh, you got to mention those bones, motherfucker. <laughs> For the unaware, unaware uh, our, our, one of our players indeed uh, broke their leg. Sorry. <laughs> Specifically my fucking Still a sorry video. subject? Oh, sorry. I meant to say um, it's the ulna and the other... It's, it's basically, sorry, I, I, I mentioned the bones in the leg, but I meant, like, the bones in the arm. Basically, the two that are, like, in your forearm that have... Radius like, and yeah, ulna, yeah. The radius and the ulna, that's what I meant to say. And yeah, like she literally like looks at you from between them, and like she like crouches down a little bit. And she's like, "Yeah, you're like a skeleton." Rebuild, more like consider it a uh, a marvel, a miracle from 
the guy who runs this entire country. Her antennae kind of twitch a little bit, and you can see, like, the reflections of her false pupils kind of shift a bit. And she's like, it looks like they took stuff out of you. And that's when the the adult steps over and puts, like, a firm, like, gloved hand on the child's <laughs> shoulder, and it's like, leave this man alone. It is impolite to say things like that. And the and then the little one just kind of like bows their 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 small stumpy horn down a little bit, a little embarrassed, as the adult looks into you with a very sort of piercing gaze from this also like kind of very similar like almost emotionless insectile face, but yeah. you can just but the difference between bugbears and hobgoblins is that while bugbears have most of their mouth covered by their large front pinching mandibles. The bug, um, the, 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 um, uh, the mega rocks or the hobgoblins have this real, like, have like this very much like exposed large set of sharp, like incisors. It's almost like the yeah. lips can't even properly close around it. Like a grimace at all times. Basically, as she looks at you and says, I really hope my little one hasn't caused you any discomfort. None at all. It's something that you get used to. I do think you're a marvel, however. Some very expensive parts have gone into making you. <laughs> well, some very expensive missions for Lord Oros will be the payment for such augmentations. He nods a bit. Okay, bye. <laughs> no, she <don't. laughs> I'm walking away now. She's like <laughs> I am going to turn into a car now. Me Jesus <laughs> Christ. No, she, she actually just kind of speaks up and she's like, "Hmm. Are you on call right now?" Let's just say I have the day off. Pretty fast. Very well. If you have it in you, meet me here tomorrow afternoon. Do we have to go on a mission tomorrow? Yeah, you do. Unfortunately, I'll be headed out of country for a while. I see. It's fine. No rest for the wicked and all that. She kind of tilts her head. Not really sure what to make of that. <laughs> yes. Indeed. It's a uh, turn of phrase where I'm from. Okay, bye. <clears throat> it turns around. <laughs> yeah. She just kind of like goes back to standing and looking out over the plants while her child is has her feet planted on the ground. And you leave! <laughs> <laughs> God, I hate Flash social cut. interactions. Good luck. That was to you tomorrow. I was about to say that was the that was the least awkward conversation Lou has ever had. He's making progress, boys. Based. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> Lou and Kellogg, you guys get an emergency message from from uh oh, from Moros. Hey, hey, uh, remember the guy that? Okay, look. Okay, look. Wrong guy. Wrong guy. He's alive. I promise. We finally have someone else to join you on your mission tomorrow. You'll be meeting him shortly. Just one to make up for the two lost. Eh. Yes. Granted. Best but... you're gonna get. I mean, unless you want to take a grunt with you. I'd rather not have a liability. It'd Carry be on. Like a grunt, though. <laughs> it kind of would. Sorry, sorry, We're playing this game. We're all fucking liabilities. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but we're player characters. <laughs> yeah, that... we saw what happened when we brought anyone along to the last mission. <laughs> Throws up. <laughs> well, whether you like it or not, you're going to have a few grunts coming with you tomorrow anyway. But until then, his name is Santiago. Santiago gave a... Is this what we're doing? Oh, wait, you're... Hold on. Keller's is this gonna... what we're fucking doing? <laughs> are, we, are we taking the whole fucking crew? Kellogg is going to sit there and to like 
Oh, is that so? <laughs> I knew that bastard would turn around. Well, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. All right. Drac, your next character better be a fucking Kevin. <laughs> All right. Now, yeah, Kellogg, uh, Kellogg has a very, like, interested reaction to that. All right. And well, he doesn't say much past that. Yeah, and Oros is just like, He'll be arriving later this evening. You can give him a warm welcome if you want. Oh, I plan to. Oh, do I plan to. So, do you guys want to spend your afternoon doing anything else? Nope. He's, got, he's prepped, got his potions. He'll be fine. Very well. I'm going to retire to my quarters, plant myself in a nice pot, and take it easy. All right, then. How about you, Lou? Yeah, what about you, boy? Speak! Yeah, I got nothing. Understandable. <laughs> well, we're going to change the Lou music. Lou goes to work. bed to get ready for another day as a cog in the machine. <laughs> Lou's like... Lou just... He never knew how to enjoy life to begin with, and now he double doesn't know. <laughs> All right, then. What is a... What's a good time? i never heard of that. We're going to be putting on Interlude by Chromical. Oh, yes. Bailey blood. And you guys retire for the evening. Yep. I the plant myself, by. get some sunlight, or get, get enough light. <laughs> you guys wake up, the siren goes off, and you're all uh, called back to the debriefing room. <laughs> Like mm -hmm. a siren, as in like an old twenties uh, factory kind of thing. Yeah, pretty much. Like get in line, boys. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Like oh, that's our cue. The, the work that's... whistle. <laughs> yeah, the work whistle. Looks like our shift's on. Yeah. So you guys make your trot back down to the debriefing room. May and Oros are in there. And, sitting in one of the seats, Hunter, please describe yourself. The one and only actual human being. He's a freak so, in this universe. <laughs> so, you see this kind of nicely uh, ori uh, like dressed, fancy kind of captain's clothing, purple and gold. He's wearing a mask for some reason. And you, you notice that he has two pistols on his side. One has a purple glow, one's normal, a yellow glow, and a rather violent-looking sword. And, and uh, he's going to be sitting there with his legs up on the table, kind of sitting back. And as soon as he sees Kellogg, <laughs> he's going to go, Oh, my Capitan, you are here. <laughs> Oh, Santiago, I did not expect you to turn up in this line of work. <laughs> it's tight, the ship is not run very well, you know. Same old, same old, body, body, blah, fuck it. it well <laughs> Welcome aboard, then. So. I hope he's not around, though, and it's just you. Uh, the, you and me both. I just wanted to ask, um, I would like both Kellogg and Lou to please give me a perception or investigation roll. Uh, sure. I'll do perception. Nineteen? Ooh, nice one. Seven! So, Lou, you're really trying to size this guy up. You really can't tell that much with all of the frilly garbs in the way, but Kellogg? This dude's rocking power armor. Oh. oh, and you had an upgrade, have you not? I recognize that power armor. Well, uh, you know, when we did that little thing, <laughs> I had to grab myself a reward. All right. Yep. Marvelous. Oh, that's a good sight. Yes. Uh, this gentleman told me that 
You both knew each other! Oh, yes. I... I've been around. And Santiago here was along for the ride, so to speak. Well, that's fine and good. All right. Is everyone ready? More than ready, fully prepped, Oros. All right. I have everything I need, boss. We'll be leaving within the hour. And basically, you guys have just a bit of time, basically just a little more time to like get yourselves together if you need to. We're loading the Franks up right now. You can wait outside or get anything else you need to in here. Make it quick, though. We're leaving exactly on the hour. Loading the what now? They're loading the uh, oh. Franks, the vehicles we're going to be riding. Yeah, basically. Oh, they're yeah. loading supplies into the Franks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Keep up, boy. So, so is there my like. My roommate had asking questions. So is oh, there... sorry. You're really quiet. Oh. Speak up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. My roommate was asking questions. Right. Ah, you're good. You're good. Right. We just got to be ready in an hour. Also, right. may I get a link to the stream? Oh. Uh, no. <laughs> I that, actually. I've got you, boy. I've got oh, you. I've got you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hell, of course. Let me post my icon in DC. Yep, you can see the masked man. Positively splendid. The masked positively spiffing. Just, 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 just look at that, Zach. Just look at that wonderful thing. God, what a, when am I gonna? Oh, Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> Absolute drip, dripped out. So, is there anything else that you guys like want to get together before you head out? Um, Kellogg's actually gonna pass out. He's gonna actually hand Lou and Santiago one regular potion of healing here on the house. Consider it your safety net if anything were to go wrong. Gracias. They matter. What is he? Lou, take it! <clears throat> oh, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> so, is both this of is you... a normal potion of healing heal for? 24 plus 2, right? Yep. Yep. I have um, everything right here as well, so I'll just put that in the chat for you guys. Yep, Kellogg gives one to Santiago and one to Lou. So, just a little thing, just in case something goes horribly wrong, you can, like, have someone use that on you, or you can use it yourself. Of course. All right. It's always good to have more of these on your hand. I bought a few last night. Luke considers the fact yeah, that he's never had a cleric it. on his crew. <laughs> God. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, Kellogg's gonna kind of look over at Santiago. He's like, Santiago, you're looking positively spiffy. Where have you been? How's, uh, how's everything? I'm curious, so to speak. Uh, Santiago's gonna be like, uh, after you left. Uh, shit got a little complicated, you know. Pirating was working, then, you know. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing it, like little. Bigger <laughs> it's a lot easier when you're working for something more. Uh, he kind of shakes his head. Legal, I suppose. More stable. All right, but I did get some stuff from. Uh, let us say my people. <laughs> they, uh, they, oh. They lovingly gave it to me. Oh, I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did. What is, who is your friend here? Your new oh. right, hand, right hand? This boy, his name is Lou. He was the one the old squadron was supposed to look for. He'll be a part of our team. And from what I've seen, he can hold his own ground pretty well. Isn't that right? He kind of turns his head over to look directly at you, Lou. <laughs> Charmed. Yes. 
you haven't seen yet. Kellogg kind of leans and look at he, he kind of leans in to look at Santiago. He's like, you haven't seen the likes of him, right? Lucky Santiago is gonna look over the general. All these fake <laughs> spectacles, They're like the like binoculars on the fucking stick. He's gonna look at Lou and go. I quite have not. He is missing his um, cojones. Oh yes, that he is. But I was talking about that him. You know the one. Uh, yeah, he, him. <laughs> Don't mention it. Don't mention it. She is still recovering from the damage. I just love the idea of Lou just sitting there awkwardly while these two boys reminisce, <laughs> not sure what to say or do. He's like, Lou's just waiting for his next mission. <laughs> I'm in danger. God, a That's social Zach. environment. That's what Zach is thinking. He's in danger now. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we have some time to kill. What say you get a drink? Uh, I'm good. I got to keep focused for this first mission. And if, when it plays out, uh, maybe, maybe if I feel confident. This is my first time working for the uh, midget. Yes, the midget. Oh, yes, the midget. His name was Oros, I'm sure. Don't wear it out. Yeah, yeah. But his wife, fantastic. Oh, no. <laughs> Another character that's going to try to have relations with Oros's wife. You have thoughts for his wife. Well, <laughs> I can't blame you for that sort of thing, but I don't exactly see eye to eye with you. Uh, I understand your corn, uh, but you know, it would really, really piss off my dominion, <laughs> and I find that funny. <laughs> The fucking chat. <laughs> Fuck up, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we're not going drinking then. We must little piss around for an hour then, yes. I've got nothing uh, better to do. Uh, let me talk to, uh, to Lou. Sure. He's not much of a talker, but I'm sure you're... Oozing charisma can soften him up. Oh, yes, he has what's known as autism. Don't speak. You're killing me. Pass your words carefully, Santiago. Oros promised me Robux if I did the job good. Solid Joe! I'm going away now. Santiago is going to look at Lou. He's going to be like, so, Mr. Lou. So, uh, what got you in this mess? You Don't know, you mean what... Senor Lou? <laughs> Senor Lou. Senor Lou. Well, what has happened to you? Uh, the, you know, the little, and he's going to point at like different parts of your body and just go. <laughs> <laughs> Are you aware of the creature that spawned from Elysia? Uh, no, I was currently on the seas. But, Wait, uh, Lou, did you mean the matriarch of the creature? No, the big demon that spawned from Elysia. Oh, wait. Mm. Oh, the war demon. Oh. The war demon. Yeah, spawned from Elysia in quotation. Sorry, go on. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it spawned from Elysia, the place, not Elysia, the, the person? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I, I heard about the, the big uh, demon with uh, the. the pa -pa 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 -pa. But no, don't worry. Let's just say uh, that I needed repairs, oh, so to speak, shot shortly shot after that. Much, much worse. I should. I'll be right back. And then he's gonna uh, look at Lou and go, So, Lou, how long have you been working for uh, the, the midget and the, uh, the, the senorita? I do not know what you mean by 
God, hearing Kellogg talk so much is like making me develop his his stupid verbal text. Anyway, I'm not entirely sure what you mean by Senior Rita, but I've worked for RS. Uh, sorry, Emma needs uh May the May the May. She's ah. Uh, oops. Why did I'm back. What I've miss? worked for Oros for... I've worked for Oros for like a couple months now? Um, uh, yeah, about. Or is it just the one mission? No, it's been... Well, you got... you. Eh, no, I'd say it's been It's a, definitely been it's at been least a, little a month. Bit. It's been a little okay. bit. Yeah. A little bit. I've worked for him for a, a, a little bit. Still paying off the augmentations. Goblin, goblin. The chat. <laughs> the fucking chat. Evil. The secondary <laughs> chat. Yeah. The no fucking. I'm mean, not uh, no fucking around. Of course. Yeah, I'm so excited for this game. God damn it. Go back and do your fucking mission, motherfuckers. All right, let, let, yeah, let's, let's go let's do the mission. Let's, let's let him talk. Let's go. Any, anything else you guys want to discuss? Uh, no, no. <laughs> San Diego, you know I hate women. I am based in incel pill. Oh <laughs> Jesus God. Christ. Jesus Christ. Christ. Take the red pill. Much like Ryan. a criminal <laughs> that has been rotted. I am black-pilled <laughs> through and through. Okay. My God. Okay, let's, let's continue before our autism leaks out. Yes, correct. <laughs> All right, so... With before that, we start attracting an audience that we do not want. <laughs> With that, Continuation? I'm going to be moving everyone to Theater of the Mind. Okay. Aha, there he is. Of There's course. Santiago. There we go. Just remember, remember the 5th of November. God. Now, now, Santiago. Just a reminder. <laughs> although I may not be a captain in this mission, I think it's best if you heed my orders. For the sake of the team. Uh, you'll know me. I follow wherever you go. Smart man, if it wise. Lou, I'd prefer if you don't listen to what I say, but I don't exactly know you, so act as you will. So, as you guys are here, yeah. you know, getting ready to leave, a warning siren goes off. Oh, that's not good. And oh, over the loud and, and over the loudspeaker, Oros is kind of like yelling. It's like all mercenaries requested for the guy who our operation return to the debriefing room immediately. It's urgent. Uh, that's our cue. Better not leave the man waiting. Let's go. Let us go. We must hurry. So, of course, you guys. Yeah, Kellogg's gonna lead the way. You guys basically go pretty much, like, about 40 steps back from where you were, and you can see that, like, everyone is in disarray right now. There are, like, people running around, there are papers being moved, there are files being checked, and you see Oros just, like, he, he, he has, like, his hands folded over his lap, and his crown is uncharacteristically off of his head and on the desk in front of him. Bald. Dibs. Bald. So, oh. upon seeing all of you, he puts it back on his head and he's like, <laughs> Seize crown, mage hand. I don't know how to tell you this, but the fucking matriarch of Guy Ular is dead! Oh, shit. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes, I am dead fucking serious! Do we know how that sort of thing happened? Anything? No. They're not telling me anything. But they're still agreeing to have us over. But I wanted to speak to her specifically. Who is running the place now that the matriarch is no longer there? Uh, it's their second in command. It's the Ulars. It's Strell. It's Strell. He's doing it. Well, at least he killed her off now. 
She's not the one I wanted to kill. No, no, no. I mean this to Mason. <laughs> two kingdoms, two kingdoms, two kingdoms. They're still offering to have a meeting with us. But... And then Oros just kind of, like, looks over to, like, a couple of his representatives and back to you guys. They're not allowing us to bring everyone along. In what way? We can only bring one Frank with us. And a very small team. Oh, a small team. Baps of three. That's you! They said that when we get there, though, it's... He just, like, squint, he just, like, squints and rubs his head. It's really messy right now. They're still willing to have us be there to hash this out. But, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, the people of Gaiular think that we are involved in some way. I can't imagine why. Santiago is going to speak up. He goes, uh, well, you see, your highness, uh... This does sound suspicious to me. Now, why would they shrink the size if they were so worried about this prisoner, you know? I feel something is suspicious. Yes, I don't like it one bit, but I'm trying not to care about it. It's more of a matter of... <sighs> they basically just really don't want us to occupy there. They are hiding something, uh, see, uh, your highness. But I make sure we will get the prisoner there, and I will find all information due to the matriarch's mysterious death. Even so, um, they're telling me very little about it. Yes. Joel's going to kind of look at you, Lou. He's actually going to turn his corn head directly at you and just kind of like... I'm sure this had something to do with what we heard and saw. What do you mean? We reported. we reported an incident perhaps happening in Gaia Ular. What we did... mentioned that we should finish the um, mission first. Remember the invoice, Oros. Surely you did not forget. Oros is like kind of grimacing right now. What exactly did you see? It was nighttime, dark. We saw I don't a large, see much at all. A large shadow heading towards the city. A presence moved over us, and we heard a distant roar. Oros just kind of like whined his eyes. Are Are you telling me that you you were there at the time of the assassination? I can't say for sure, but. I get the idea that we it had something to do with it. I don't or believe any of us believe that. Oros is kind of like be successful at the time. Oros is just kind of And the kinda, mission was more important. Yeah, Oros just kind of like uses his fleshy hand to like kind of like fucking pull down his fucking eyes and he's like, <laughs> "Oh my god, that's fucking why." They probably think you did it. Why were you Wouldn't so close? Be the first time. Why were you so close to Guy Ular to begin with? That's where the route took us. We had to get past an impasse, a ravine of sorts. Yeah, Oros just kind of like starts to hyperventilate a little. It was like, "All right, it's fine. It's fine." How do the new ones say? Fuck it, we ball. <laughs> About. This is not a fuck it we ball situation, Santiago. <laughs> no, yeah, no, yeah. Or Oros is literally like, this is not a fuck it we ball situation, Santiago. <laughs> oh, you don't understand. We need to be ready for a trap or it's something. It's on the is where I come from. I know uh, someone who would very much say it's a fuck it we ball situation. I know. <laughs> You'll be meeting them shortly. Oros. What's the plan? Do we go there ourselves or not? Yeah, Oros just kind of lets out a deep breath. It's like, I'm still going. I have to represent all of you. The three of you, however, and uh, Oros is just going to kind of 
wave a hand at someone and say, You're gonna have two more grunts accompanying you on the main mission. But as for that, that's all the backup you're gonna get. Is the mission still a go, or is our mission to protect you now, in case any shenanigans? I'll be trying? fine. I'm just saying is that we're really not going to be able to cover as much ground as I would have hoped. Of course. And also, I really don't fucking like talking to the Ulars. Ugh. Funny. Well, actually, Mason, could I roll some history on the Ulars? Because Kellogg might know something about them. Go right ahead. Yeah, I'm I'll, curious. I'll, I'll, I'll allow both Lou and Kellogg and Santiago <laughs> to, roll, uh, to roll history or if they'd like to. Yeah. Are the Ulars perhaps CJ's family? I rolled a 12. Let me see. History? Mm hmm. Where are you at? My feet ever fucking lows. God damn it. <laughs> 13. I got one higher. Oh my god. What about you, Santiago? You got anything? I'm for my fucking cheat. Goddamn love. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate this goddamn website sometimes. Real. But what if I shotguns? Is how I made this character. What if I? What if corn? <laughs> what if corn? <laughs> All right. Well, well, well. Hunter stole. What if guy. corn? History, history. Yeah, history. Yes, please. Oh fuck. Okay. Four. <laughs> so, honestly, Kellogg and Lou, with all your time in Guy Ular, you have no idea what he's talking about. Interesting. And it's weird. Why you would hate the Ulars in particular? No, just like the like yeah, he's gonna raise it he's gonna raise a corny eyebrow and just kinda like the Ulars now. I'm afraid I'm not up to speed, Oros. And then fill me in. Yeah, and Santiago, you're you I I'd say that you've actually probably never been in Guy Ular yourself, so you really couldn't say. I'll lend an ear to whatever you have to say. I got it. <laughs> So, Oros just kind of clasps his hands together, and he's like, basically, they're kind of like their secret service. If you haven't heard of them or seen them directly, that means they're doing their job well. Basically, whatever the matriarch... They... <laughs> whatever the... Considering they... Go on, go on, go on. Whatever the matriarch doesn't front load herself, the Ulars are working everything behind the scenes. They're like a private government, almost. Considering they allowed an assassination, I can't imagine they're very happy about how their job is going. I don't know, because they hate divulging information as is. When it was with the matriarch, you could always just talk to her directly and she would just tell you everything. She was so great to work with. Yeah. Ugh. She was rather blunt when we talked. You need to be on your guard, and you need to be careful. Hey, kill my kid. <laughs> hey, yo, come kill my kid, please. Are there anything we have to look out for specifically, or are you just as clueless as us when it comes to that? I am not ready to meet CJ's mom. Oh, she should. She's my entire projection of the mill fetish. We're not Any there sort yet. Of insignias. Where you? We're... Well, I'm glad that I'm finding the- uh, Frankly, I'm more glad that I'm finding this out before making the whole way over and then being told about it because I have no idea what's going on over there right now. Hey, um, Oh, wait, no. Zach. Yeah? Would- it, would C CJ indulge Lou on his family? He- no! He never did. You guys never talked about it in character. Lou's not the kind of guy to really dig deep, let alone talk about backstory oh, no, stuff was, too Lou much. Was Lou was there when CJ found the pamphlet. <laughs> yeah. We don't talk about that, though. <laughs> but CJ, oh, was don't. CJ going to be like, yo, check this out? No, you audibly heard him go, Mom? <laughs> and he saw the diary. And like, I think they made a pact. Lou was not ready for that insanity damage at the time. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> they don't know. They will never know. It's really maybe, it's one, really. maybe one day they'll find out. Who knows? So, 
basically, yeah, Oros is like, so far we're being, pr I mean, we'll at least be able to escort ourselves there with armed of forces, course. but we can't occupy there with it, and they won't allow us to keep them parked out back either. Makes sense. I just think it's kind of weird that they're just getting really stingy all of a sudden, but honestly, I have a feeling it's just because the Alars are actually able to control something for once. It's sneaky bunch, sneaky bunch. Just be on your best behavior, bend over to whatever kind of weird rituals they want of you, and you probably should be fine. It will be fine. I have connections in the uh, <clears throat> undesirables. I should be. I will uh, contact some people. What kind of people? Uh, how, do, how do you say... How do you say terrorist syndicate? Uh, <laughs> when people's stuff go missing and it ends up in a new store or uh, doors become unlocked. Yes. Yeah. Locksmiths. Or else is like... We already have some people stationed for that. But like I said, things are really dicey right now. We don't want to make any stupid moves and make them think that we're objectively trying to dig through everything that they have. Oh, we gotta no. play nice. And no one else can know about this. They told us uh, that too. We can't tell anyone. The only... Uh, I'm... This is... Because the Ular, because the Ular said that they're gonna make it Bruno keeps prop, they're gonna make it Bruno Central's problem, if we do. Let's fight Bruno Keep. Let's start a war. We have enough. Of, we have enough of those already, my guy. Yeah, more. No. Get out of here, Zach. <laughs> go flat. Go back to playing a brooding bastard. <laughs> T1K! T1K! God. <laughs> God. Well, I am sure that we're all on our best behavior. Would want to muck this up for you now, wouldn't I? I hope so. So, just so I'm sure about what we're doing here, we're there to get information on Snips so that we can have the jurisdiction to take him home? Yeah, basically, you guys are going there to basically give basically give a court claim to basically occupy guy ular until you find snips and essentially oros was gonna think about probably occupying like about 25 percent of the of the city itself with his own armed forces just so they could as thoroughly it would basically be a law it would basically be a federally approved search of the state basically but because of what just transpired, you guys are only being limited to a small team. Because right now, according to what Oros is telling you, the people of Gaia Ular, not the actual people running it, are really, really sussed out by Drekland right now. Yeah. Everybody's sussed out by Drekland. And it's Drekland not, is just sussed in general. It's not even because it's not even because like Gaia Ular and Drekland have had like objectively like bad tension. It's more like Drecklin does the most work with Gaia Ular, so a lot of people are just kind of, like, turning their eye a bit. And also, based on what you told Oros and how he reacted, they... someone? Or something? Might have seen you? Might have seen Kellogg and Lou while they were... while you guys were, you know, slowing down and kind of taking your time? Well, they wouldn't have seen us in particular. They would have seen the vehicle. Yeah, the Frank. Still... It's a piece of Drecklin technology. Not easy to hide. True. Well, we couldn't have, we couldn't have been assassinating the Queen while we were hanging out all the way in the mountains three days away. But we could have been one component, basically. True. The presence nearby is enough for them to be like, that's a little weird. Basically. Especially since we were dealing with some covert stuff really nearby. Yeah. Pretty much your only saving grace that you could think of is that you are probably using, like, an approved route that trades have been done on before. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it, it sounds exactly as weird as it does. So make of that what you will. Yeah, no, Kellogg's just kind of kind of nod his corny head and be like, All right, Oros, I get the gist, and so do we all. No need to feel green around the gills. 
squints at you. I'm not engaging. We're done here. Get out. <laughs> we leave at five. Kellogg unravels his hands. It is like a triple wave over to him. And uh, yeah, fucking let's, let's, let's boogie. All right. So with that, you guys are given your Frank. Mm -hmm. Is it the same Frank? Uh, it is the same Frank. And y'all okay. have two guys with you. Well, two more guys, I meant to say. <laughs> two very unimpressive looking grunts. <laughs> I see you are not the main character. <laughs> and they basically just seem to be stalking the, the Frank itself up. How <laughs> did it work, boys? Kind of like Kellogg says, just walking up to them. Uh, they grunt at you. Ah. Uh, Acting according to your namesake. Good. <laughs> Runts. They do Keep up the good work. We should Kellogg nods his head, <laughs> looking back at the rest of the two in, like, approval. Oh, they'll do just fine. And uh, in common, they do say, We should have enough supplies to last us for the trip. And it's guy who lost, so they got plenty of good stuff there. A lot of good fungus. Lots of plants, lots of fish. Way more than over here, that's for sure. Yes, it's a forest. They're looking for stuff. And a guy who lost than anywhere else. Get in. Of course. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> what <laughs> scrunched up in there? So gunched. Gunched. Like a clown car. Alright, so with that, who is actually going to be acting as the loader and the... Uh... Kellogg drives. He steers his ship. Alright, so mm -hmm. he is the switcher and lose the loader. And honest, and that's the thing about being the loader on the Frank is that multiple people can be loading at the same time. Like, doing yeah. repairs, angling cannons, doing all that kind of stuff. And also, you know, we got some guns. Also supporting in the back as well. So, with that, you guys start to make your trek out to Guy Ular. Is there anything that you guys want to do over the course of that time? Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Scream! Kellogg's focused on steering. Very well. Rico's gonna. I don't know. He's probably going to prep his uh, pistols and his sword. Yeah. The two hobgoblins don't that. really talk that much as they're basically just kind of shining up their own guns and making basically counting how many pellets they have. This is how you shine a gun. Beats them to death. God. Anyway. So, if no one else is doing anything of significance... You guys end up a guy who are, and we're going to be changing the music once again. Yes, it is a smooth trip or not? Um, I'd say for the most part, it's pretty smooth. Yeah, uh, Kellogg's just kind of nothing really. Get I will say that, like, while you guys are probably like leaving Drecklin to make your route, you probably do encounter a few odd things that try to get in your way on the way out, and the grunts just kind of take care of it and, and and encourage you to just keep driving and not look back to and not looking back. <laughs> God. All right, we're actually gonna switch back to neuron activator. Jesus Christ! All right. So, you guys, you know, make the trek from the mutated jungle across the you know more kind of arid desert region, back through the plains, and then eventually, of course, the for the the forest starts to thicken, and it turns into a full on jungle. I imagine that you probably take a route that's. I imagine the reason why it takes three days specifically is because you guys probably take a route that's a bit closer to the coastline just to stay out of the brush so, you know, your big bulky tank can kind of get through pretty all right. Mm hmm And surely enough, off in the distance, you see the tall, thatch lookout towers of Guy Ular's infantry. And, of course, the large gates that are made 
out of, you know, sticks and other, like, super overgrown trees and plants that have been cut down and weaved and modified to basically kind of almost completely hide this place. Mm -hmm. So, your Frank rolls up, and you guys see two Dunkleoids stationed at, uh, the, uh, at the two watchtowers up in front. One of them is really short, a mud skipper, while the other is much oh, taller. Shit. Probably a, um... Coastal. You could assume, yeah, probably a scrapper. Alt, who goes there? And that's what... When... The... Go on. Uh, Santiago's gonna look at Lou and go look at uh, Kella. We are here from, uh... Breckland. Uh, we were expected? The Dunkleoid kind of, like, turns its face to you. You can see the large orbital kind of, like, sizing up and down. Then he looks over to the other, um, the other, uh, the other Dunkleoid on the side of the other gate and gives him a nod. They are expecting us after all. And that's when Oros does pop up and he's like, We have business with the Ulars deeper inside. Keeping things discretionary and confidential. Word. And the gate starts to open. <laughs> Bye. You will be escorted inside. Things are in a state of unrest at the moment. You might get some odd looks. So, the two large fishmen <laughs> kind of climb down from their positions. Two others take their place, and they basically start to kind of guide you down the streets. So I love how he says that, as if we wouldn't get odd looks. Either way, with the corn man in the cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> so, for those who have been to Gaiular before, you know this place as lively. There's always some kind of celebration or party going on. You know, the way that this place is built is that essentially all of the rivers that come from the mainland basically travel through here and then, of course, connect back to the ocean. But all of these rivers and streams they've been modified into like the very walkway. So think of it as a lot like Venice, but yeah, but more, yeah, but more or less like further imagine, imagine if Venice was like, you know, deeper in a place like South America or North Africa, basically where, mm. you know, it's very, it's very lively. There's all kinds of plants growing through here and the, these, you know, these, these inlets and, and uh, canals are stationed in such a way so, you know, aquatic creatures like Dunkleoids and gnomes and the like can basically just kind of move fluidly through here, you know, get out when they need to and basically refresh. And usually this, these, these streets are just like packed with people just like hanging out, going to venues and eating and just partying and having a good time. But everything is quiet. You see maybe one or two of the, uh, of the canal residents just kind of like swimming idly in the water. But other than that, most of these places are all closed down, and you see very few people around. It's very uncharacteristically, like, low energy for this place. Yeah, Kellogg's just kind of scanning it around. It's like, oh, that's a bit, uh, I can't say it's unexpected, but very not the norm. Atypical, if you will. Yes, I heard that. I will allow us both to be a colorful city. Uh, this seems more dreary than anything. Feels more like Dracolin, if I'm being honest. But we're not here for the sightseeing. Hmm. The grunt, the so grunts what, like uh... the grunts visibly sag a little bit when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> You're really looking forward to having some neat. He's telling the fucking truth. We know. Uh, we don't like it, though. Yeah, Santiago is going to look at uh, Kellogg and go, so what exactly did you see before the, uh, what is it, the bullshit? The, uh, the, on your way here, what was the mysterious shit? Some sort of roar and a presence that loomed over us at all we could wager. The roar was likely... Well, with hindsight, the row is likely the leader. Mm. We could spend all day guessing, but there's only one way to get answers. Okay. Uh, are we hold up one second, are? because 
Ooh. Santiago and Kellogg. Hmm? You yeah. guys notice one of the Dunkleoids escort escorting you is giving you the side eye. And they've basically been kind of like looking at you this whole time that you guys have been walking down. Yeah, Kellogg is going to just kind of keep walking, not really focusing his attention or making really any like... He's not really letting them know that he knows, basically. What does Santiago do? Santiago is going to look at the eye, the side eye. Tackles him to the ground. Go, no. What do you fucking think I'm playing? Fucking Siegfried? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's going to look at the Dunkleoid and go, what? You've never seen a Driven before? <laughs> the Dunkleoid acknowledges you. Says, frankly, I've seen enough for one rotation. Uh, fuck you, but the puto, you fucking curtain it. <laughs> You've not seen a driven? <laughs> I've seen enough. Scourge moment. God. <laughs> so, you guys are rolled through the town, and eventually, you guys meet the foot of the temple where the matriarch resides. And standing on, um, and basically on, like, basically, um, up the stairway, because this place is styled a lot like a South American ziggurat, so it's not like the Frank can kind of just park itself in front of there. You guys gotta walk a little bit to get up there. Yeah, that's and what I was wondering. After, and I'd say about, like, um, about 50 steps or so, you see something slither out from the entrance of this temple, and it has the lower half of a serpent. A bit too familiar. Hmm. It's going to... Ex it extends a hand out in front of it. The Dunkleoids nod, and they basically step aside and call out to you saying, All right. Access is yours. Thank you. And, um... Oros will also... The, the Hobgoblins will help Oros step out. And... Oris will basically, you know, or basically command the uh, the two grunts to basically stand here and keep watch while they're doing their thing. And they nod. Oros kind of like walks between the three of you and he's like, All right, let's get this over with. So Kellogg hops off and gestures for the rest to follow. Yep. I, he did. Taking some pretty light steps and adjusting his metal conquistador hat. So you guys climb up the stairs. Oros is having a bit of a harder time with it. <laughs> Kellogg kind of like just chuckles to himself internally when he sees Oros just hopping around like a chihuahua we... trying to get up some stairs. No, that's... Should we give him a, a hand or would that make things worse? <laughs> Kellogg does not seem to be wanting to aid him. Just kind of <laughs> relishing in it. Yeah, he... If you do try to offer help, he actually holds up a hand. It's like, nope. I gotta do this myself. Of course, <laughs> sir. Hold up a moment, sorry. Oh boy, I can't wait to see <laughs> what we've if... inadvertently done as a party in T3K to cause this. <laughs> if, he, if he were less mangy, I might even think this is adorable. Uh, it's it's a. Uh... It's kind of like seeing a, a fat cat try and get up a couch, you know. It's a, <laughs> it's a, you feel you can't just feel bad for the guy. That moment where the Ulars offer up snips to get Siegfried back. God. <laughs> Fucking. Do you know where? Do you know where CJ is? Lou ninety nine stress. <laughs> All right, sorry, I'm back. Don't make me pull out the Bobby. All right, sorry about that. I am back. Oh, welcome back. So, uh, you guys enter the mouth of this temple, and it is basically just a great big long open space where you see that there are basically stone tables kind of layered off to the side. There are really large pillars that are basically etched with the, um, you know, the designs of serpents and. A lot of just a lot of other like reptiles, a lot of creations of Ovisaris. You can very prominent imagery of Ovisaris and Amines. You can actually see kind of like engraved into these pillars and a lot of the other architecture that is in this giant 
wide open, almost cavern like um, interior of this temple. And as you like do kind of initially step forward, you do see that there are actually a lot of more of these snake like creatures that are all basically kind of surrounding you, creating almost like a defensive perimeter of sorts around the interior of this large opening in this temple. And that's when you look all the way down to the other side of, you know, to the very back. And that's when you see it. You see the crumpled, fallen over body of a large dragon. What color? I'm getting to that. Okay. So, the thing that Lou would have remembered about the matriarch of Gaia Ular is that it seemed like she was contained in some kind of large crystal of sorts. It's almost like as if she was trapped there. Yeah. And from what it seems, she's still very much inside of this stone, but you can see how, you know, the large body has kind of fallen and slumped over. You see the length of the neck. You even are able to kind of see over, like, the scutes on the back to where all the arms and legs would be. And... And that's the thing about the color of this dragon. And, you know, dragons are... I I used to identify them explicitly by their color, but I did give them proper names. You know, Magi for red, Envoy for white, Cleanser for green, that kind of nonsense. And this dragon just... I mean, I can't really say how many of you have really, like, done a lot of research about draconic life forms, but this one always just seemed kind of odd to you because you're really not sure what kind of dragon it was supposed to be. Hmm. Like, yeah, you see some black, but there's also some red over here, some white over there. There's some, like, green iridescence on over on this area. And overall, the form itself doesn't really deviate that much from... Honestly, it feels more like looking at a dragon from a distance, even while you're up close. Yeah. A lot of these details are just kind of, like, beyond you and indistinct. The best way I could compare it is, like, a large mass of roots, almost. Interesting. And at first, you think that maybe uh, they did something with the floors. And that's when you realize that, like, all of the fountains and kind of other canals of water that were around this body, it's all blood. Oh. Yikes. Just filling this place up. I'd say Ooh. it's, like, not enough to the point where you guys can, like, you guys can pretty much, like, avoid stepping in it if you, like, you know, looked out for it, but there's a lot of it. And that's when... Right next to this body, you see a much larger, more prominent-looking serpentine figure. They're kind of rearing themselves up on their lower body, and you can see that they have their arms crossed. They're wearing these very sort of, like, decorative-looking robes, um, mostly gold, green, and purple. And uh, something in particular, though, is that you notice that they have almost like a veil of some kind covering their face. And sprouting out of the back of their head, you see two long, thick serpents that don't have any eyes that are just kind of, like, rested on the shoulders, almost like a scarf. But as you do grow near, you see them kind of stir and react to your presence. And even though this figure's face seems to be covered, you've noticed that their head has been training you guys this whole time. So, hmm. Oros will step forward, and it seems that there's almost like a a small table between you two that you guys can kind of take a seat at. It's I want to say it's more like a modified altar of sorts, but um, all of you can find places to sit. Or actually, if anything, it's probably more like standing. You could like probably sit on a brick or something if you wanted to. Oros will kind of clasp his hands, put it on the desk, and say, and they'll pretty much just kind of start, like, talking over the agreement. Are you guys doing anything at this time? Nope, Kello is going to be attentive. Fair enough. Santiago is go Santiago is going to kind of st stretch, and he's going to kind of take in what's happening, the matriarch, 
anything that he could probably identify as maybe an assassination attempt, po- like as signs of poison, stabs, gunshot. Sure. Uh, I will. I will say if you do try to get closer to the matriarch, some of the serpentine guards will kind of like tense up as you draw near, and then that's when Oros will be like, eh, "It's best you keep your distance. Just stay close to me." But I will either roll, I will rally to roll medicine though, and honestly, anyone else sizing up this dragon could roll if they'd like to. Yeah, I'm also gonna roll. Medicine. Fuck. All right. Actually, can I roll nature instead, Mason? Or would you specifically want medicine? Well, if you're looking for like injuries and cause of death, I would roll for medicine. Okay. Yeah, I want to wow. see specifically how like yeah no because Kellogg and Lou were the ones who kind of heard something so let's try, try. he's trying to figure this out too <laughs> yeah go right ahead so that's my roll Lou do you want to roll two or no medicine is Lou curious about Lou's like not exactly a medicine man that's fair I yeah. think he would just I I think Lou would pretty much get stuck at oh God Strell's mom is dead yeah that checks what out. do we do from here all right. So, I'll go over Enrico first. So, Santiago, you're kind of looking up this dragon, and all that you can think of right now is must have been stabbed in some kind of vital area because all of this blood is just out. There has to be some kind of cut on the body that I probably can't see from this angle. And honestly, mm-hmm. Kellogg, you get a lot of the same things. But yeah. I will tell you something. And this is more like a sense you kind of get from your physical body being a nerd with magic as it is, being a Zoan. I want to say that, like, you're picking up very faint traces of Icor in the blood. Ooh. At least in a few areas. It, it almost kind of, like, stands out to you like some kind of thermal imagery, imaging. Like, imagery, if that makes any sense. Hmm. Lou does want to get a sample of the blood just because he feels like that would help him find the Strel. Like I said, if you try to get close, they're like, they just seem, they seem very tense around you guys. Yeah. So, on to what Oros... Something was... to worry about later. So, on to what Oros was saying. So, I see that our conditions have been changed somewhat. And then the veiled figure will speak, saying... Yes, they are. Things are not we will exactly. We now kill the Oros. Things are not exactly as we planned, and the people are very unsure of you right now. Yeah, I know. So, I have delegated a way that we could make this work. It will be a great hunt. Huh? Would either of you like to roll history? Wait, say it again? Oh, did you They're just... They're hosting a hunt? Oh, a hunt. A great hunt. Yeah, uh, what the hell? Uh, sorry, what, should, what can I roll again? History. Insight history. or history? history? Okay, history. Uh, where the fuck... Oh, there it is. He's the dog cannot read. <laughs> Four. <laughs> I'd say that. So, Lou, you haven't been in Gaia Ular for very long, but when you did, you did see advertisements, specifically yeah. like signs, posters, and honestly, even like merchandise. Basically, speaking of a great hunt, you're not. You're not completely sure what it would entail, aside from the obvious, but you feel like it's a pretty, like, sort of important event. And a lot of people here seem to really like it. And as for um, uh, Santiago, you kind of get the same gist, but I'd say, like, oh, are we going to be going, like, fishing or something? (laughs) Is this going to be a fishing minigame? I gotta get my boy Iceberg! (laughs) Not yet. But the veiled figure will continue. I have read over the evidence that you have provided about this snips. And honestly, I put my sympathies in you. Information is precious. We should be frugal with it. 
and Snips is violating our relations that we have with you by doing what he did. And yeah, just Poros just, just kind of nods. So tell me, Poros, if you do acquire your quarry, what will become of him? Well, I was thinking of indefinite imprisonment. Or maybe a way to uh, suggest this knowledge out of him. Even if we are Put able to capture him. Even if, even if we are able to capture him, he still knows what he knows. This information is very, very private. Pictures of Oris at the Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the veiled figure will actually briefly turn her head to all of you and look back at Oros mm. and saying, You know the stipulations of a great hunt, yes? I do, but I don't think these ones know. No, I don't be I, th I don't think I do actually. No. Not quite privy to that sort of thing. It's fine. I will tell you. The Great Hunt is an Ula tradition that has been that has been practiced for centuries. All the time that we have spent on this world, we have practiced it. We hunt those if there is someone who we feel is worthy of a punishment, we give them a fighting chance. We hunt after them. How honorable. And you are allowed to do everything in your power to get your quarry, to catch your prey. But those who are not involved in the hunt cannot be harmed in any way, or else it will immediately be cancelled, and you will be subject to capital punishment under us as if you were living in our city. But, if individuals wish to intercept the hunt, they become part of it, so they become fair game. Do you understand? Oh, I understand. And it seems to be a, a rather fair deal, does it not? So it's a, <clears throat> it's a, it's a free for all. We can take out anyone else as part of the hunt, so long as we try to get our quarry. Only if they are part of the hunt. Of so course. In, so in other words, you must stay away from everyone else. And actually, wait, shit, I was going to say one more thing that I wasn't, I was, I was about to say, but. I love the fact that we're learning so much about CJ's culture while he's in a wormhole for 10 years. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember now. So she'll speak up saying. <laughs> so another stipulation is that we will not be assisting you directly. You will have to find your prey on your own. But, Are they somewhere in the city? Yes. You will have to find them. But everyone knows when a great hunt is taking place. And unless someone is willing to intervene themselves and become part of the hunt, they cannot stow your prey away. Mm. So as for our agreement, we are not too keen on having excessive armed forces in our city. So, you have brought us your hunters. And we feel as if you are also in need of an extra hunter. And with that, um, the, woman will kind of, the woman will lean back a little bit and she'll gesture to one of the guards. They'll nod. And a large creature will present themselves. Zach. I mean, sorry, Drac. Uh, <laughs> introduce yourself. A massive door 
begins to open <laughs> on the far side of the ziggurat. He's on the and back you hear the side. sounds of claws and massive weight shaking the ground, scraping the stone. And you see these glowing yellow eyes from the dark side of the room. And a large green reptilian creature reveals itself. I sense a great evil on the other side of that door. A creature that's a oh. mishmash of different saurians with a crest of blue feathers and vibrant war paint no. coating its body. A large Please lance of sorts, maquahuitl, and many other weapons adorn this creature's body. It steps forward. It can't oh, be. Me. Oh. Oh. This I one is so excited to see his friend Kellogg, yes? Scares! <laughs> Ah, he had gotten word that the Conquistador was around. He was obligated to help in this great hunt. Oh, bother. I, I never thought I'd see your scaly mug ever again after what happened last time. Uh, why? Why did it? Okay, guys, what are the odds that he's in the hunt, but against us? Lamal. 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 Unfortunately so not. Ultra killer could kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting for you, the scales. God. There he is. He's here. He's here. Hey, Zach. Does this crew look familiar? <laughs> Never heard of him. So, the veiled... Um, this is all because of me, by the way. The so veiled serpent that. woman Very will cool. put her hands together and say, I welcome the hunter champion Scales into your personal arsenal. Yes, this one is called Scales the Foolish, though only by his enemies. And by me and my crew. And by no, me. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know him as Scales, yes? Scales, I will call you everything but your fucking name. Ah! But this one remembers Santiago being no fun. He just kind of shakes his hand in the air. I suppose we can turn down a component of the hunt. While also, here. Kellogg, you notice that Scales has actually grown a few feet bigger. Yeah, he's going to look... Remember him. As you get close, he kind of looks you up and down. I thought those were my receptors playing tricks on me, but scales you've seen to have grown a bit. I yes. At least an inch or so. This one has been doing good on eating his like, calcium and protein. And then he just pounds his chest. The, Built like a gorilla, eh? The, ve the veiled Ular claps at this, very entertained by Scales' display. <laughs> Well, I can't say you'd be worthless. That's for damn sure. <laughs> so that's when Oros turns to face all of you, and he's like, So all of you know each other, then? Well, yes, we do. As I know Santiago, I know Scales. Mm, this one does not know who this creature is. And he just raises a claw pointing over to Leo. Oh yes, the boy. Go on. I thought you were going to say that to Oros for a second. <laughs> <laughs> this one! I do not know, know what this creature is, but it is very small and very old and stinky looking. <laughs> you know what? Really I well. almost wish... I almost wish that he would have brought Frost in. Uh, so Frost could steal Oro's DNA and become him. That's so fucked up. <laughs> Awful. That's pretty fucked up. <laughs> Im implying Santiago already can't do that, though. Um, anyways. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> he has to extract the DNA from the source. Oro's wife. <laughs> God! Jesus dead. 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 <laughs> Scales, we killed introduce him. yourself to the boy. He's not much of a talker, so he's gentle and friendly. He kind of like oh, he kind of like good. shuffles you forward. By the way, Lou, you feel <laughs> feel a, a planty hand kind of push your back and force you. You hear forward. the metal boots of Lou scraping against <laughs> stone. <laughs> Don't be shy. 
He won't bite. Actually, I think he will. <laughs> ah, this one does not like the taste of metal. Lucky boy. I am... Holy shit, there's something you don't eat? Jesus. I am so <laughs> confused. You, you see this creature that's almost like... Its arms are long enough to practically knuckle walk, and it reaches over and and hands you its palm, webbed fingers lining the the base of the digits, with all all of which possess small talons. He offers your hand for his his hand for a shake. Lou will take the hand. Oh, quite. Full. He will. He will. He will happily, cheerfully snort and bellow and practically shake your arm off. <laughs> it's like the Buzz Lightyear meme. Literally. Pretty much. <laughs> Buzz, could you give me a hand? Hey, uh, Zach, meet me in the yeah. abyss real quick. Oh lord, <laughs> you're getting ten points of psychic damage. Oh, IRL. What's up? You get a message from Oros. Only to you. Yeah. What? I did not agree okay. to these stipulations. Be prepared to break away the second things get hairy and do your job. Understood? Indeed. Keep a close eye on that one. In reference to scales. Yeah. Effectively, get, get snips yeah. through any means necessary. Also, I noticed... Is that what it means by do my job? Oh, yeah, basically. Or do I have another job that I'm forgetting? Oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> okay, okay. Get snips however you can. I'll take care of the mess afterwards if there is one. Does Lou have to audibly give a, a response? Um, It's mental. All right. I, I guess he could just, like, nod his head. But, um... He will also say, well, are you sure you want to do that? Yeah, probably not. So, and uh, one last thing is... Also, I noticed something else upon us coming into here. The Faceless is here. Does Lou know what that is? Uh, roll, me, roll me religion. Religion, my best skill. Nine. You know that they are a demigod of this world. Hooray. Yeah, I think they might have worked some kind of deal out. They seem to be protecting this place. They might be keeping you from your goal. Don't let them get in your way. Do you think they'll be part of the hunt? Well, according to the stipulations, if they do, then yes. Of course. Out. Shit's happening right now. <laughs> mm, true. Hello. Hi, Mason and Zach. Oh, so well, scarred that I found Jesus. Give me a sec. <laughs> God. So, Oros is, hey, hey, has man. basically been kind of like looking scales up and down this whole time. And then he looks back to the veiled woman and says, All right. Your city. Your rules. I agree to these terms. And uh, he'll actually reach out his fleshy hand to basically do a shake with her. And they shake on yeah. it. This one was hoping you would. Otherwise, uh, most problems would have become of a rise in this case. No, they would not. <laughs> <laughs> the hunt will last as long as it needs to, and the city will be closed off. No one gets in, no one gets out. So we are to assume that everyone in the city are part of the hunt. Only Those that we to be, yes. Only if they directly involve themselves. Otherwise, they are our observers. Mm. Think of it <laughs> as... Think of it as... A grand festivity. Yes. This one wishes to prove himself to the city of Gaia Ular that he is a strong and capable warrior, yes? He pounds his chest violently. <laughs> she, she just kind of comes like, oh yes, Skiz, very much so. And, and then that, that's when she actually does look back at Oros and say, also, Skiz is here for 
reputation as well. The people <laughs> like him a lot. So they will yeah. likely treat you with a little more respect if they oh. see you with him. A legendary figure around these parts, Scales. Oh, you've moved up in this world, haven't you? Yes, this one has many tales to tell of his conquest upon the seas with the legendary conquistador. I suppose any lad can be polished to a good degree. Yes. I'm so confused. Oh, don't worry. It won't get any better, Lou. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Just stick by us and it'll all be fine. You look like the type to ask last. Act first. Mm. Yes. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> He's got him there. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry your pretty little metallic head off. Just do what you normally do and you'll be fine. Yes, and this one will protect all his friends. And he puffs out of dust and snorts. <laughs> the Veiled One will speak up again. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Oros has already gone over the specifics of this situation with you. And as she kind of gestures to the body of the matriarch, and she says again, So, once your work here is done, you are not to tell anyone of this. Do you understand? Skills talks rapidly. Of course. I wouldn't tell a soul. The enemy must not know that we are weak and without a leader. He understands. And Oros, you will do your best to make sure that your hunters follow your orders, yes? Yes, ma'am. This one will also make sure they obey the rules of the Great Hunt. Oh, yes. I it's... put my trust into you, Scales. Yes. She actually reaches this out. This one is glad. She actually reaches out a hand and scratches your chin a little bit. <laughs> he, he, his, his, his uh, crest of feathers flare up like a cockatoo, and he, and he snorts and bellows loudly. <laughs> Let's just say that you've assembled quite the team. Kind of directing it to the uh, Ular official. It is so nice to see so many people united as one. Now get out. Of course. Way ahead of you, Oros. Send us our way. Oros uh, gives a little salute, pushes his chair out, steps down, and basically leads you guys back outside. And he with falls that, down the stairs. Oh god! <laughs> and with that, <laughs> we are gonna we take push him down the stairs. We're gonna take a short break. Sounds good. I gotta get okay. some water. And I also want to grab a snack and think some stuff over, and then we'll get Sadly, back into it. So I can't go past 11, as that's, usual. That's fair. We were probably going to stop out in there, I imagine. Honest, well, actually, you know what? If that's the case, then I feel like I want to stop things right now, then. Fuck! Right before the hunt? No! I know. Yeah, I'm honest, because, yeah. I'm in agony. Yeah, the hunt cool. would be something that would definitely take more than like oh, an yeah. hour left. Hunt's it's probably going to take more than sure one session, let alone more than an hour. Hunt, the hunt will, actually, the actually, hunt, actually, wait, you, mm, soup time, right? How long are we have yeah. soup time for? Why don't um, we have a thirty-minute soup time so he can do his assignments? Because I can. All I have to do is take a quiz, and that's plenty of time if we take thirty minutes. Besides, that you, might make me something to eat. Because I just need to get that out of the way. But what do you, what do you, what do you think, Mason? Uh, well, like I, well, like I said, uh, I definitely don't want to because I'm just gonna be outright. When you guys actually do find snips, it's gonna be one big old combat, like crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a feeling. So yeah. you know, if you guys like need to go to bed at a certain time, I recommend it's best we probably just end things now so we can have a fresh start and just get right into it and ride the whole thing out. And then I'm what gonna be real. Think? I am deathly tired today. Fuck. Oh, Fuck. I, I agony. I am perfectly fine right now. Bit of a short. Yeah, session. same here. So, are we all in agreement then? We're gonna. We're basically just gonna wait until next week to really dig into this. Because it would be much more convenient, just in general, to get it like the whole four-hour time slot. You know. Oh yeah, straight up. Because this is all. This session was about this. Is, this is a setup session. If it's, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, preamble. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. We had to introduce two new characters and set up a plot and yeah. kill Lily. What the? What?
<laughs> I don't say her name anymore. <laughs> it's funny how you, you think I have screen. You it's just think like, I have forgotten? <laughs> killing her off screen was the best thing you could have done. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, but we could have we could have went in and tried to save her, but eh, fuck it. We gotta follow Oris's order. <laughs> <laughs> I fall over and I fucking die. God. Well, anyway. Come on, come on. If we if we work with the Eularians to kill Oros, that means there's only one world leader left. Bruno? Well, you gotta go certain, get Bruno. A certain, a certain reptile had strict, strict instructions to not fucking do that. Oh <laughs> no, nah, I would love to fucking fight, but I don't think it's in the, the, the books right the now. The funniest, the funniest part about this is that despite, like, you know, this session, this, this game being called The Four Kingdoms, before I started streaming, this party pretty much almost never engaged with the politics of any of these kingdoms until they were directly called to action by a few... Until we had to happened. murder one of them! More not, or less. Not only did you have to murder one of them because they were trying to lure you into a trap, but you were caught in a literal <laughs> castle falling down and were recovered by none other than, than Dreckland. And yeah. basically had to survive being interrogated by them. And that's effectively why Lou is here right now, is because he basically sacrificed himself so that the rest of the party could have autonomy. Yeah. And to this day, Gabo is still in the cell, not saying jack shit to Oros. <laughs> for now. <laughs> well, don't worry. Stips will be very good leverage for that. Hmm. Oh, so are you guys actually planning on bringing him back alive? <laughs> I mean, that's what Oros is planning. I don't want to kill him. Time to kill Snips. So why are you making us fight Balsam and Snips and everyone, bro? Yeah, I was like, why are you just bringing friends for us to kill? Because they're, they're the I know we're playing friends. the enemy, they're but the still. Friends, but, uh, <laughs> they're not, not Dreckland's friends. Not yours. Nope. Throws up. <laughs> Well, I guess one thing I can say that I liked about the session is that I felt like I was actually able to, because I, I I thought a lot about how Ular actually how Guy Ular actually functions, and honestly, mm -hmm. how, how did how did you guys feel about the session? You have the fucking Dai Li and I Guy wish Ular. I got to do more. <laughs> I there wish is I got no to war in Gaia Ular. Listen, uh, listen, listen, Drac, you will have your shining moment. As I'm kind of regretting doing this. This is what I get for killing your warlock, I know. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. I was going to play a cleric, and it was everything's going to be cool. And or I was going to play my paladin that Lou would kill <laughs> fucking instantaneously. God. What do you just say that? Lord, well, who, doesn't, so okay. who doesn't always kill his friends? <laughs> so here's the funny he thing. Kill a paladin of Scepter. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's probably true. Ah. <laughs> So here's the funny thing, Zach. I had made scales as a backup mm -hmm. for in case fucking uh, in case Gunku died. died. Uh. And then I find out that Chris made Kellogg, and I'm like, well, shit. <laughs> Here we I go. can't just not play a scale. The biggest surprise, I was like, Kellogg, and then everyone's like, good god! Am I gonna have to make Jack as like a as a secret fourth character? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> in case gets dick. I mean, to be fair, Zach, you still well. Okay, so I guess I in might as well dips. I might yeah. as well contextualize things for the audience because I know that we discussed this, but I don't think I ever said this in game. So yeah. The fun thing about Lou Piercer is that I wanted to design this as a lateral experience. So what that means is I wanted players to really experiment with the types of builds that come up with the session that we've all, I mean, sorry, with the system that we've all been developing together. So mm -hmm. um, between missions or depending on circumstance, I allow my party members to basically tap out and switch places with characters that are either more relevant to the narrative or maybe just fit a play style they want to pursue. So, in this case, you know, uh, Drac has text, and now he also has scales. And, of course, because of what happened with Vivi, <laughs> by, by obligation, no. Hunter had to bring in another character. Now but, we have Santiago. But funny, funnily enough, though, Santiago was not one of the characters that was actually prepared yeah, to be swapped uh, out, which I think is really funny. No, it, it, I was going to be... It's inspired. obligation. <laughs> it, uh, I... So the other character I was going to play instead of Vivi, if she did her fucking demon antic bullshit, was a fighter. 
a normal named fighter. Eugene. No, fuck that. That's Chris. Only Chris can do that. <laughs> and if it's his third character, I will attack him physically. <laughs> real life. We're all gonna play characters based off of Chris's cursed mind. <laughs> I, it's I, a cursed I, I, world we live in, thanks to Chris. If, if I hear Chris go, yeah, it's called Cam Kipping. I will <laughs> remove his tibia and replace it with Dude, mine. Dude, I'm so excited for the hunt. I want to kill the thing that killed. Uh, I, I can't even remember her name. Don't Dragon. worry. Dragon. Especially forget. I, I oh, brutalize God. him on the spot. God. No way, you wouldn't do that. <laughs> I do it. Well, I do it. I, I brutalize know. Eugene. Well, I know this session was a little shorter, but uh, actually, oh yeah. So I, I, I don't think we actually really got that deep in the session. So yeah, d yeah. Did you guys like have fun with this session? Did you guys like? Oh yeah, it? yeah, oh, yeah. No, I yeah. Still enjoyed it absolutely. I would have got to do more, but I kind of deserve it for killing Hunter's character last session. <laughs> <laughs> Relegated to the back last hour. Also, yeah, for those of you who are very confused about the joke and why I am suffering so much. <laughs> uh, I, Zach, the guy who is running Lou, I had, I had a pirate, a pirate themed campaign that I ran for a very short amount of time and that that campaign died. And these are all of the characters from said campaign. Yep. Captain Kellogg, Therefore... son Enrico Santiago and <laughs> Scales the Foolish. Were They're trying the to give me crew. an extremely subtle hint about something and I just can't <laughs> put my finger on it. <laughs> I was like, I need to bring back Kellogg, and then Scales. <laughs> that jar was like, I need to bring back Scales, and then we looked at Hunter like, you need to bring in Santiago <laughs> right now. Well, <laughs> for those who joined in to watch the stream or are watching this vod at a later time, I want to say thank you so much for viewing our game, and we will be running next week as well, same time as always, and we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye! Remember to subscribe and hit the bell notification! And slap that like button!